Happy New Year! Happy New Year, everybody! I messed up the intro, did you notice? I, I noticed, it's okay. <laughs> Should old acquaintance <laughs> be forgotten, never brought to mind? <laughs> nice Should voice! Should old acquaintance be forgotten, <laughs> old lang <Yes>. <laughs> It's not just... <laughs> The beginning of 2024 almost. It's also episode 52, as you pointed out yes. before we started the show. So we've got a year's worth of episodes, but we have we do. been going on longer than a year at this point. Yeah, we started in October, so just or a little over a year. Yeah. Which is nuts. I actually, uh, we got an email onto our account, and the guy's oh, yeah? like, yeah, he's like, uh, uh, so he's re- he reached out, I guess he's some YouTube dude, and he's like, uh, you know... 52 episodes on youtube you should have way more engagement give me a call and i wanted to write back and say uh we actually didn't join in the beginning <laughs> you know i think i think we, we joined like at four at at the late 30s or something like that um yeah something like that yeah because so, we were something. we were strictly on spotify and like i think rumble for the first like i want to say like half yeah yeah, we're still having problems with the Rumble link with YouTube, so I actually have to go in and manually upload everything from, I think episode forty-one or something. Nice, which is which is really annoying, you know. Yeah, and I can't. I, I don't know if they got rid of the link because I can't find it anymore where I can set it up and I and I search for everything. It might be like a pro thing now. I'm not sure. Well, um, I've got all fifty-two episodes saved to my desktop on my laptop. So if you need me to resend those to you, let me know. Sweet, yeah, and no, I should I should have them too. It's just, and you know what? It actually it, it should be easy because I'll just copy paste everything from uh, from YouTube. There you go, and then and then upload. So yeah, once I have time, I'll put those on there because I guess well, that's the platform for like our type of shows or some of the subjects. Um, mm-hmm. Even these big guys like Russell Brand, um, what's his name from Bright Insight? Like they'll start a stream on both YouTube and Rumble, and then they'll switch over halfway to just Rumble. They just yeah. get off. I mean, I, I I can see that. I mean, looking at it now or thinking of it now. I mean, I mean, I do listen to podcasts on on Spotify and stuff, but I do definitely tune into a lot of uh, YouTubers who essentially just have podcasts on YouTube. Oh, nice. Do you, do you go to Rumble at all? I, I, I once in a while. Yeah. Um, it's just YouTube's easy because I got the app, you know. So I'll even like put it up get the video started and then i won't watch it like if i'm at work or something i'll put the video like the screen face down and just listen oh, nice. you don't like even stuff like um aj's show um the mm-hmm. wire files you really don't need yeah to, i mean you should watch it but you don't but have you don't to, need to right um but you should yeah, definitely yeah. reach out to that guy who reached out to us and i'd love to be a guest on whatever he's doing I mean, no, the, I think he's trying to. I think he's trying to like uh, sell his services where he can like optimize YouTube or something like oh. that. I, that's what, yeah, that's what I understand. Oh, okay, all right. Well, that's a shame. Uh, if you <laughs> do have your own YouTube show with one or two viewers, hit us up. We'll be on your yeah, show. We're not going to absolutely. bring a huge draw or anything, but I think it'd be. <laughs> I think it'd be fun. Um, yeah, you on your show, you will have the Uncovering Anomalies podcast. Um, that's right. Th- that is, I want to believe, Adam. Hey, everybody. And I am Topher, the 2024 XXL iPodcast New Year edition, only $29.99 <laughs> after tax or before tax. Sorry. <laughs> Did you just add that, the $29.99? I, I had that originally in my name, um, but it wouldn't fit. I, I had to <laughs> drop it down to 50 characters. <laughs> Well, that's a very that's I like to see. Is that, is that going to stay all for 2024? No, 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 no. no. Oh, all right, just just for today's uh, bah, 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 New Year's. Because it's the New Year show, and once again, ladies and gents, we are recording on a Friday night. Yep. Um, holidays landed on Sundays this year, which normally we record on. So we're still we're still getting content uploaded to you, um, but yeah. it's just not on normal days. Yeah, and there's a lot to get to this week too. I, yeah, I even I even dropped some stuff because I was sharing stuff on Signal. You can share it to yourself, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was looking at them like, eh, nah. It's like it was a lot of like technology stuff. There's some cool stuff in there too, like technology breakthroughs and, but just over my head. Like I don't, I get it through my feed, but there's a lot of things going on with quantum computers, you know, and a lot of these breakthroughs with materials and like, um, I don't, I don't get it, but it's it's making them really close. Uh, to how we use computers now so you, we can easily see like uh, quantum computer like desktops mm-hmm. in like five ten years which is insane to think about i mean it so it th- so this is 
kind of kind of related so we 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 released or we showed that trailer we didn't release that for gta 6 right oh yeah um, so i was thinking about this the other day gta 4 came out when i was in high school and back then in the oh, game wow. you had to go to a uh internet cafe do you remember those oh yeah dude of course i remember those that really wasn't that long ago and look we are now and then if you go the opposite direction into the future i mean it's it's not hard to you know it's not that crazy to believe we will be in the quantum realm yeah Uh, i mean the quantum internet they're talking about too where it's just instant uh like you can just have it like one on you can have on mars communicate with earth instantaneously yeah i think like i I remember reading I remember reading an article about China doing something similar, and I think I've even brought it up on the show where they had a yeah. satellite up in orbit, mm-hmm. and they were mm-hmm. using quantum communication to communicate with it, which is super interesting. Instantaneous transmission of data. I don't think they were able to trans transmit a whole no. lot, but still, I mean, it's a beginning spot. Yeah, what they did was it was entangled particles, so they both have the same spin, and then they they yeah they had one up in space, one down here. They changed the spin on the one down here, and instantaneously the one on on the satellite change to its spin super so, cool super cool stuff it is I it's guess right around just, the corner yeah and they just have to figure out how to just put info in there and mm-hmm. cryptography i mean that means uh if if you're using quantum crypt- cryptography you can never break it ever so i don't know if governments ever want that however if the government has the quantum computers only then they can break anything so cryptography means nothing yeah it's an interesting and scary concept um, yeah, you know, plus yeah. you've got the AIs coming up. I mean, AI, quantum computing, all this stuff combining is going to be uh, the next five or 10 years should be very, very uh, scary, if not just interesting. Yeah. You know, like an AI computer. Uh, sorry. And yeah, an AI quantum computer. They haven't done that yet. But if those merge, it'll be like a human because, yep. you know, they say like our the way we think is kind of like a quantum computer that we, we think in parallel ways uh, and parallel thoughts you know which mm-hmm. which which a normal computer can't do but then yeah you add that you that's when agi probably comes in actually there'll, there'll, be, there'll be a clip on ai uh on today's show oh cool yeah so here we have here let's start the end of 2023 which i can't believe it i this year went by way too fast it really did and everyone is saying that 2024 is going to be horrible. Does that mean it's not going to be? I mean, Tucker's talking about it. I think there's just a lot of stuff that, I mean, it's kind of been ever since 2016. It feels like everything is on the horizon. They're, they're talking about World War III. They're talking about uh, China yeah. going haywire, uh, the economy, um, yeah, housing prices. Yeah. Um, just everything seems like it's one you know misstep to just crashing the whole system. I think that's yeah, and, then, thing that a lot and of UFOs too, and I, I guess they need that. They want you the whole UFO, not the whole thing, but like uh, if they want an ontological shock, right, which comes from the subject of UFOs, mm-hmm. they probably need chaos, and that's yeah. how they can let it out. You know, when people aren't paying attention. Exactly. Um, all right, so this came out early last week, December twenty fourth, so on Christmas Eve. Uh, and this is talking about the UAP Transparency Act, which was which was signed. So this is in the Roswell Daily Record of all. Yeah, voice of yeah. Pete Coast Valley. Yeah, and placing a marker to judge government's UAP transparency a year from now, oh which is, I think that's a yeah that that's a that's a cool that's a cool way to like measure their success. Like, all right, fine, they passed it. They, we didn't get what we wanted, but at least there's something in there forcing yeah, it's- them right to it's uh, like a, a time capsule that is even more disappointing when you open it up uh so yeah i mean there he basically just sums it up and he goes unless uh like they have to the national arc the, the ndaa orders the national archives to establish a uap records collection this new collection will be populated with data and information from government agencies and departments holding relevant uap accounts unless withheld by the president see i just I, uh-huh. that one really a way me. out but it- Always a way out. Who who can deny the release of any records at his discretion? His? What if it's a woman? <laughs> oh, these sexist bastards in Rothwell. <laughs> On national security grounds. Oh, uh-huh. here we go. They already used that excuse. What's the difference? All of information in our government's possession related to UAP created 25 years or more before enactment will be disclosed to the public. That means Roswell, Topher, uh, and all those ones from, from the 40s, the 50s, 
Uh, you know, like all those, all those weather balloons and deformed children from Russia they threw over the border. <laughs> yeah, or Germany, right? It was, it. was yeah. it Germany or Russia? Uh, I think they said it was. I mean, sh I'm sure everyone says a lot of things. Uh, so an excellent place to start is with documents we know exist or should exist. For instance, still classified Project Blue Book records, as detailed in his book in plain sight uh, by Australian investigative journalist Ross Coulthard, acclaimed attorney Daniel Sheehan, then general counsel to the U.S. National Jesuit headquarters in Washington, D.C. He's a, he's a Jesuit. Interesting. You know, there's a lot of people that always, that's all, always comes up. The Jesuits run everything. Yep. <laughs> They don't have access to this. <laughs> he was granted limited access to Project Blue Book files in the spring of 1977 that have still never seen the light of day. Uh, um, yeah, according to Coulthard's reporting, Sheehan saw photos of what appeared to be a classic saucer-like UFO. The picture of the object Sheehan viewed had crashed in a field and was covered with snow. Um, and one of the images also showed symbols on the side of the craft just below the dome. Man, I would love, I mean, people compare them to Egyptian hieroglyphs a lot. Yeah. Um, I would love to see um, some actual like photos of, of these symbols on the sides of crafts. So cool. And, and I guess that's why Sheehan is such so, so militant about this. Like he wants this stuff out because he saw it, you know? Mm hmm. He goes, it's absolutely true. I was given access to classified Project Blue Book records and saw these photos, said Sheehan. There was a UFO stuck at about a 45 degree angle in a snowbank with what looked like U.S. soldiers and equipment from the 1940s. Nice. Dude, imagine this one comes out. Without a doubt, those Blue Book files, including the pictures I saw, are precisely the sort of information the NDAA demands to be released to the public. Sheehan stated, but the bigger question is, will they? The government doesn't want this information out. It never has. The problem, of course, is that Project Blue Book concluded there was no evidence of extraterrestrial activity. Releasing these files would be an admission that the government lied all along. Our government always tells the truth about everything. Yeah, yeah. Hey, did your parents like lie to you a lot? I'm trying to see. I'm trying to like. I mean, mine not a lot, but yes, I was lied to like on many occasions. To I don't protect me. I guess. I mean, so I uh, this yeah. it's really really funny you bring this up because um, <laughs> I was sitting. I can't remember what it was. One of the the days over this holiday season, I can't remember what night it was exactly. Uh, I know of at least one big time lie that I've told for a long time. I didn't realize it was a lie. So a long time ago, back in high school, um, you know, when you're, you're young, you can only get alcohol sparingly. You can't just yeah. walk into a store and buy it now. Right. Yeah. And, you know, being some high school kids, we all got alcohol. And me being the responsible, whatever I was, 15, 16 <laughs> Uh, years old i was like all right you know what i've got a big car we can all fit i'll drive and i won't drink and okay. so we we're out having a great time on the town i mean i wasn't having that great of a time but you know you're hanging out with friends was fun regardless the next day i was helping my dad or something and he found the alcohol in the back of my car or he borrowed my car or something mm -hmm. anyway he and my but mom wait, was it in the back seat or in the trunk? I believe it was in the trunk. I had a Jeep Grand Cherokee, so it, it wasn't uh, like a trunk shows. trunk. It's like yeah, that yeah. trunk okay. space in the back you oh, can reach. I love that back. car, man. I love it. I know, it. it's great. 1994 yeah. Jeep Grand Cherokee is my first car. I love that thing. Anyway, yeah. the next day my dad sat me down and said, hey, the cop showed up at my office because he had my car, and they said, you know, we we it was reported to us that a bunch of teenagers were driving around with alcohol in the back and we need to know whose alcohol it was. And my dad told me, he goes, well, I talked them out of it and said it was mine. And that wasn't a big deal because at the time, and it still might be the case, there were no laws against open alcohol containers in the car. Uh huh. Now, yeah, not there. In, yeah. in Montana. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I was like, Oh shit. And so, you know, I told all my friends, I was like, yeah, apparently cops got called and someone saw us drinking and yada, yada, yada. I just found out over this holiday season, the whole thing about the cops was just completely made up. Oh, my. they lied to me to scare me. Oh, my God. But yeah, I see. So like the government just acts like its parents. And that was a long the, story. The <laughs> are the kids. Sorry. Sorry. No, yeah. man, not at all. And no, and, and that happens to me, I think, every year. I'm like, wait a minute. That was a lie. You know, I, it's, oh, man. So, I mean, you know, they obviously lied about Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy and stuff. Yeah, but I don't think that, that counts. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how much my parents lied to me. I've never asked. I've never like caught them in a lie. 
Yeah, he, well, I guess it's not really a lie. It's a, they're protecting us. It's a white lie. Is that what the government thinks? Um, so within a year, we'll be able to answer these questions and more. Hopefully, let's see. You know, if twenty twenty four this stuff comes out, I'll be I just, hope so, man. Oh, dude, that'll be so amazing. The years go going by so fast now. It'll be uh, just like tomorrow. Wow. And now these are some goofy ass pictures <laughs> up top. It's the Daily Star. It's a tabloid in the UK. Uh, Mum. Freaked oh, yeah, yeah. out as UFO that looked like Doctor Who's TARDIS flies over her house. I don't. I've watched Doctor Who before. So I if I I don't know much about Doctor Who, but I do believe TARDIS looks like a um, telephone. Uh, what the hell is it called? Uh, telephone booth from like London, except it was blue, if I remember correct. I I think again, I don't know much about Dark Doctor Who. Uh, so I think you're right. So, and that this is her. She. But why would she, wouldn't you just say telephone booth? Why? I know what the hell, man. Like, why maybe, does that be a doctor? I, maybe it's because those don't exist anymore. So I, apparently, she freaked out that aliens are watching her after photographing UFO. Uh, shouldn't it be a UFO that looks like Doctor Who's TARDIS, uh, which she claims routinely hovers over her house? Ooh, Kate wow. had grown suspicious of a shining object that beamed above her house in Middleton, Leeds, for the last few years. The 36-year-old was adamant the unidentified flying object was not a star and decided to investigate the matter further by using the ultra-zoom camera on her phone. Is what Ooh! It <laughs> does look like a phone booth. <laughs> it does. I mean, could that be something like... I not an optical did. illusion, but like you know, when it's something like really far away and it's foggy because it gets foggy there, right? Well, I mean, that and I mean, cameras on phones are getting better, they're still not great. Zooming in, I don't know, is gonna it, it doesn't help resolution at all. And it's one of those things where, and we I was listening to the episode last week, we touched on this when we were talking about the Dorito, the Dudley Dorito, yeah, yeah. Um, there's so much, um pixelated stuff in the photo it's not possible to see what the object really looks like it's just it, it, it's a very broad generalization of what she's actually taking a picture of but it is a cool photo but again that could be anything i mean this looks like a lamp post in the middle of the night from far away yes exactly uh so she took three photos they're saying after no, examining the, mom the photo of, mom of three took a photo not three photos. Never mind. Doesn't matter. Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, Mom of Three took a photo of the shining light last week from her garden, but never expected the results. After examining the photo, Kay admitted to feeling freaked out by the object, which was reminiscent of Doctor. Okay, fine, we get it. I really Doctor like Doctor Who's Who. Famous flying time machine, like oh, like Bill and Ted's. I've never seen Bill and Ted. <laughs> oh, you have their yeah, time machine. Is called it. Look, go- it's a photo booth. It's got to be. She's. I mean, it's got to be some weird optical it's thing. It's clearly going on. a TARDIS. I mean, well, wait. Let's go back up. Well, kind of. It's right? just a rectangle that's upright. Right. It's clear. TARDIS. <laughs> Who said? Oh. Uh, probably a quote thought, from the article. My first thought was it could be some sort of extraterrestrial. I didn't think it was a spaceship, but when I saw the shape, I thought that's not normal. Freaked out. Okay. Well, oh, so we've talked about um, what's the what's the the place in in Utah, Skinwalker Ranch. The yeah. people on there have talked about seeing UFOs that kind of resemble refrigerators. Um, oh, and there's actually a word for it in Mexico. Uh, it's not a chewy chewy. I can't remember what it's called. It's something like that. Really? And so, and it's still that same kind of rectangular shape, but the ones that they that they talked about, they thought they looked like they were made out of porcelain, which I couldn't say this looks like. Right. Um, I mean, if it is like a time traveling thing, there are people who say there are, they are these might be human time travelers. I mean, I don't know. Weird. I, Very strange. Yeah. I'm gonna, hold on. I'm going to have you Google something really quick. I want to see a comparison. Okay. Um, hold on, hold on. You know what? Keep talking. I'll come. I'll, I'll okay, come so we here. got uh, we got also uh, this one. I mean, I knew the Nation of Islam was a kind of UFO cult because their founder supposedly went on a mile wide UFO and met Allah there. Um, so here's a clip of uh, Louis Farrakhan, and this is what in the let's see. 1930s, da da da. Here's Louis Farrakhan describes the half mile wide wheel in the sky that frightens the American government and shuts down our technology. Oh, There's a man. great clip to listen to. 
Um, I, it's he, he's young here. It must be in the '60s when he was making this speech. Give it a play. It'll give me some time to look All up. Right. Yeah, I'm trying to look up. It was Elijah Muhammad, fifty-five years ago, who started teaching us about a plane in the sky that was made like a wheel. Ezekiel's wheel. He said his teacher, a man, Master Farad Muhammad, pointed out to him a dreadful looking plane in the sky, a half a mile by a half a mile. Built like the universe itself, it's circular and it holds within it 1,500 little wheel-like planes. Since 1930, they have known that this plane exists. But why won't they tell the American people? It is because the white man <laughs> does not want to admit that there is a technology in the world and a power in the world that makes his power look like that jumbo jet in comparison to that huge plane. <laughs> He don't want to admit that he don't have what it takes to deal with that, what they call walnut-shaped object in the sky. Elijah Muhammad said to us that Ezekiel envisioned this. In the year 595 B.C., and it's recorded right there in your Bible, Ezekiel looked up. It was a vision. And he saw a wheel in the middle of the air. It looked like a chariot of fire. A cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. This is what Ezekiel saw. And he said, in the wheel, there was eyes in the wheel. I went to Libya and told Gaddafi <laughs> what America was planning against him before it ever happened. Because it was shown to me. And I told him, I got it from a wheel like object. They don't want to tell you. But when the bombing started the first time, they looked up above and there was a bright shining object over the Mediterranean that interfered with the communications on that highly sophisticated aircraft carrier, they had to send it back to Florida for repairs. They're not telling you this. Is that true? Read it and whip, you demons. <laughs> your end is in sight. <clears throat> for Elijah Muhammad told us what that plane was to do and what death and destruction, as well as life, was carried on that plane. What you gonna do? when it shows up over Washington. You Why can't shoot it? it out of the sky. You ain't got nothing. I understand why you want a Star Wars initiative. Mm -hmm. I know why you want to build a space station. You think that you will be able to get up there and do a little damage, you fool. You are just like the damn fools that fought against God in the past and thought they could win, but God never loses. And he didn't come here today to lose. That's why today he don't think two cents of you. He won't even whip you himself. <laughs> Super Cobra, he's cool. He's a great My speaker. goodness, that guy's a great speaker. He is, yeah. There's only one of him, right? He's not, ba he's not <clears throat> allowed back on yet. Okay, on, so, on next, yeah. Go go back to the last article we were looking at really quick. Um, if one? you still have it open, all right. Now and then in a new tab, op Google like you can just go up, if you f go up to the actual picture she took. Oh wait, sorry, I was up the new tab. All right, and then in your I want to no 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 this that's one? not no 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 the one she took this one yeah and then go and then in your new tab type in chupa chupa ufo also google has really gone down the drain or it's being heavily oh, censored. Time. and it's it's so hard heavily to, it's so hard to find what you're looking for chupa chupa ufo chupa chupa ufo you might put chupa chupa ufo brazil uh and go to images 
Yeah, you see that on the far left over there, that magazine cover? This one. Uh, yeah, that's the Chupa oh! Chupa UFO. Yeah, exactly. Dude, nice one. Yeah. Oh, wait, it opened up a new tab. Oh, no, it didn't work. It's not It's not working. Well, no, see, but this is what, this is what I'm talking about when Google's really gone to shit. I, you typed in Chupa Chupa UFO like I did on my phone, and look at all this stuff that's not the Chupa Chupa UFO. Yeah. But that's because when I first heard of those things, it was a couple of years ago, and it was super easy oh, to God. find anything on them. I mean, that whole video, I was looking for this, like, the, a picture of the Chupa Chupa UFO, and I this is like a knockoff magazine cover, but that's what they looked like. So, I mean, my point to that first article is that uh, seeing something in that shape in the sky is not unprecedented. Good, good job. <clears throat> Very good job. I've never even heard of this. Like those beings in there. <laughs> yeah, I said I said Mexico, but I guess it was Brazil. Like maybe it was also in Mexico. Yeah, really pain in the ass to find. It. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Um, so isn't that cool? I mean, uh, Farrakhan's hectic, huh? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> of course, make it make it against the white man and his technology. <laughs> well, you know, especially it sound from when that video looked like it was created. I mean, yeah, it, 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 there was a lot of that. Um, people feeling yeah. that way. There was in the 60s for sure. Yeah, that's when. Uh, oh, I sent this to you. Yeah. So, uh, our. Uh, I mean, come on. You know, listeners, if you want real good UFO stuff, support the show. You know, we have a we have a link at the end of every single show. It could be one dollar. You know, it doesn't matter. Two dollars um, or whatever you want. But I mean, I would love to get access to this. I know it's kind of expensive. Four hundred per year. But I mean, look at this. It's all the move on archives, right? From the nineteen from nineteen sixties mm -hmm. to two thousand five. This is the, this is for those who are catching up. This is Project Aurora, right? Oh, sorry, Project. Yes, you're right. Oh, uh, sorry, Aquarius. 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 Project Aquarius and uh, Leonard Stringfield. Stringfield's notebooks. He when he died, he gave them to move on. So they're making those available now. His notebooks, not his books that everyone has access to. His actual notebooks. Colonel Rupelt, Rupelt, I don't know who that is, John Warren collection, the Hayden Hughes collection, the Richard Lang collection, and finally, a multi-level UFO report map from the MUFON case management system. So, so much in here yeah, that we can go through on the show, you know, and just show people the evidence out there that, you know, this is not just one thing and it's not just, it's not like it's not extraterrestrial or that it's not real or it's only us. You know, all this will show that this this is something yeah, real. Yeah, it's really cool that um, MUFON is putting this all into one spot. Yeah, it is. It really is cool. And four hundred bucks a year. What is that? Forty bucks, forty bucks a month or something? A uh, little, a little bit less because there's twelve yeah. months, not ten. Yeah, so it's not it's it's not a crazy amount of money, you know. Yeah. For for that much information. Yeah, so, I yeah. think I think what we discovered. Or maybe it was just you. It's fifty dollars a month if you pay monthly, but if you get just a yearly thing, you get a bit of a discount. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so I might end up doing it anyway. We'll see. And then you know, at least it'll give us a lot of cool info that we can <laughs> show that no one else has. You know, I was gonna say if we ever run out of info during the week, we can always fall back on that. But we have never once enough on <laughs> ran out of info. You know, in the beginning when we first started, in the first. A uh, few episodes, yeah, we had to go on Twitter and on U UFO X, UFO Twitter, and look up what's what people are sharing. But now it's just every week. I mean, Newsweek, MSN, NBC, uh, CNN, everyone is just sharing stuff. And then you have all these podcasts too, and that are huge platforms like Danny Jones. I mean, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say he's only a UFO podcast, but he does a lot of UFO stuff. Well, and one thing you've done a great job at is going to local uh, news and digging up stuff there. And it seems like there's we've done that for like almost a month now. It's been every week, a week, you know, month straight, being able yeah. to see if there's, you know, these local newspapers reporting on stuff that's going on in their hometown. Yeah, good point. So, yeah, so there's so much interest and it probably gets a lot of traffic once they release these things. So they know the public is interested in this mm -hmm. and have always been. You sent me this. Um, this is yeah. I never did finish the whole thing, um, but this is a video that was posted to the UFO, one of the UFO subreddits on Reddit, and the title of it is CIA and NASA are trying to open the door to a spirit realm, and being interviewed is Ryan Bledsoe on the Danny Jones podcast. 
Yeah, so he's Chris Bledsoe's son, um, who is a UFO contactee, the Defense Intelligence Agency, the CIA, NASA, they're all interested in, in, in this family. They go and stay with them. I mean, even what's his name? Uh, Jack Vallee has stayed there, Hal Putoff, and pe- people go to their house and they hang out and they just wait for things to happen. Things happen to these guys. Um, so yeah, it was a cool interview. I did stop it um, at, at a point because it, it's a long interview. It's about two hours, two mm-hmm. and a half hours long. Um, here he talks about, oh, so this guy named Hal Pavinmir, which I don't know about, but I guess he was, he's NASA. He was the right-hand man of, uh, of Hynek. And he what NASA sent him or, or CIA sent him over to the blood souls to basically, you know, say that it's bullshit. And he ended up believing them. And this is him telling him the story of that. So I'll press play here. Well, he said more to my dad than he said to me. I mean, you know, I was I was younger. I, I think he, he, he let a, a lot more out to dad, but he knew it was spiritual. He indicated to my dad that it may be his family. Yeah, yeah. The the, the beings, the entities, you know. Now, here is something that I find particularly uh, wild. But <laughs> in about 2008 or nine, I would have been like 15 or 16 years old. Something he said to me and my family that for many years I've been paying attention to in my mind is that by the year 2025, the disclosure rollout would be on the table. Wowzers. All those years ago, 2008 or 2009, he said, the government's disclosure plan is going to be out on the table by 2025. And we're going to, this is what he's saying. He said, and we're going to do it through soft disclosure, meaning there's going to be like a, a, a steady drip of information so as to not shock people. It's going to be like little bits of information coming out over a long span of time. Right. But you know, that, that we should know pretty much the majority of everything by 2025. Huh. He, he told me that when I was a kid. <laughs> I mean, it seems like we're on that course. Maybe, maybe yeah. we're screwing it up by pushing uh, these government officials to release it too early, but I don't know. I yeah. don't really agree with that. And maybe, and maybe that's why. Uh, yeah, it's always they always give it, someone always gives a date, right? And then, it, and then oh, yeah. date, date comes, and then nothing happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's a, it is a cool interview because he talks about his experiences. Uh, it's his dad who's the real experiencer, right? But then his dad brought him along to these experiences. Uh, have you have you heard or read about his dad's experiences, like that, that woman that he sees? Yeah, yeah, kind of. I I know of it. I a little bit. Let me just put it that way. Okay, I think someone here says something. Uh, one of the uh, one of the comments. He goes, "So the woman and bull that Chris Bledsoe keeps seeing is supposed to be Hathor, Egyptian mythology." And at one point, she says that the hidden one is Amun Ra. Is she telling Chris or us that Amun Ra, also Egyptian mythology, mythology, is our creator? I mean, I wouldn't go that far, mm-hmm. um, but that's. Uh, Another thought came to me is that when the Bledsoe family were testing using the two quasi quartz material, I personally think it is a part of a UFO. Oh, here, yeah, that's right. NASA came to him. I think it was Hal put off one of them, or Valet even, uh, and they showed them this material they got from a UFO, and that hmm. they're able to like uh, th- this family is able to interact with this material, and then that's why this guy basically, I mean, long short, uh, long story. Where Short. is it? it? Yeah, he goes, why you? And he goes, and you must be their family. So that's why they think that they're, they're family of these beings that they're seeing. Again, the whole spiritual thing. Yeah, know, it, it ties in. It really does feel like it ties into it somehow. Yeah, exactly. Somehow. Yeah. Not well, saying there's not nuts and bolts thing, but. Yeah, but there's, there's something you know, in the spiritual world that is part of this UFO thing. And that, that kind of seems to be the common thread we keep coming across in all of these, um, you know, things yeah. we've been researching recently. And then there's this one that came out. This is, um, this is love and saucers. Yeah. You, yeah. 
The sky and saucy. I love the very first thing on there is, I lost my virginity to an alien, <laughs> whatever he says. <laughs> Aliens, abductions, hybrid children, relationships with ETs. It's pretty cool. I think he's believable. He's, uh, no, he's it's, an it's, artist. It's, it's good. It's just, I don't know. I thought it was kind of funny. I mean, it's, and it's strange. Like, again, why you kind of thing? And maybe he thinks that too. Like, why me? Is it circumstantial? Is this something in the DNA that they're looking for? You know, like, um, a family member of ours used to always say that, uh, especially with the, with the prophets, that they're because they're all one lineage, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like the religious prophets, and that they're basically abductees, but they and and they all share a DNA and a lineage, and that even happens in the in the, uh, the abduction. Phenomenon. Yeah, I mean that's also something that's very common um, with UFO abductions and sightings is that it seems to run in the family. Yeah. Exactly. So there's something in families that that they're attracted to or that they want to uh, keep going. So it's like listening to this guy. You know, it's just crazy how just normal he just talks about it. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, when I was 17, I lost my virginity to a female extraterrestrial. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> that's all I can say about it. <laughs> that's it. I think so, that's just uh, the intro to it. No details. So I tipped her on her back, and we got on the water bed, and got a position. <laughs> <laughs> this has to be New York. Uh, he's an artist, though. This guy, he's got some crazy images, uh, paintings that he does. Yeah, just that short clip at the very beginning. He had a picture of a UFO, or not a UFO, an alien behind him that looked a lot like um, the one off the front of Communion. Ah, uh, see, so he meditates. I wonder if he meditates. He used to meditate when he was seventeen, because yeah, that's, that's something too with it. Mm -hmm. His meditation and like, I guess they come in contact with these beings, or they ask for content. Yeah, uh, I contact. Mean, uh, the guy who first wrote about uh, Men in Black, it was the same thing where he would. Uh, David opens his eyes meditate. only to see a pair of glowing eyes staring back at him. It was a little hairy guy, and David is not afraid. He is very calm. Voice. David, get dressed. Come outside. Cut to David opening the front door. He sees a little hairy being, his eyes glowing. Voice. Follow. David closes the door behind him and follows. They cross the field into a line of trees. There is something on the ground. It is glowing. They go over to it and go inside. There are three insect-like beings. The little hairy being. Hmm. Two of the little men and a woman. She's wearing a dark blue cloak. One of the insect beings comes toward David. Voice, sit. Remove clothing. <laughs> oh my God. Lie down. Bow, chicka, bow, David wow. lies down on the bench. <laughs> chicka, bow, wow. There is an orange yellowish light comes on. David is looking at the light and doesn't hurt his eyes. He is aware of the beings. They are standing over him. They are touching his body. Uh -oh. David becomes aroused. NSFW. The is there. She looks at David. And <laughs> Don't listen to this at work, folks. No getting boners. <laughs> they watch as David and the woman have sex. Uh, Soon it is over. They're watching the too? Him, yeah, they want to take notes, man. Face. <laughs> woman, forget. David says, forget. And the mantids are there. Yeah, they that's interesting. So, yeah, very cool. I just like VHS. There's something about the tape rolling. The beautiful silence. I mean, it was like I was inside a vacuum or something. There could be a, a car outside honking its horn, and then it would stop. And there would be nothing, absolutely Boy. nothing. These beings didn't Creepy. seem hostile. So she's like a hybrid, I guess. Scared the hell out that would of me. Be my guess, yeah. no, there was never oh, a no. hostility at all. <laughs> there is the little greys. They were small. I kind of got the impression they were workers. Interesting. The hairy guy. That's very the hairy guy. His eyes. I mean, it's weird. I just saw an image. It might be it's probably fake, but it looked like this, but he's much bigger, eight feet tall. So he's just as small as the greys, but he's hairy. Huh. So not really a big foot, kind of just right. like a little foot, and not the dinosaur from Land Before Time. And he's the one that got him. Interesting. Right? Yeah. Huh. That always got me. A tall, thin being, he had a knob on the back of his head. 
He was like the person in charge. Mm -hmm. There was the insect being. He reminded me of a praying mantis. He was frightening, but he always spoke to me as if I was a child. And then there was Crescent. That's her. I was walking in the woods. Oh. And I see a woman sitting under a tree. And she gets up and she starts coming toward me. I become very aroused sexually. I couldn't get my pants down fast enough. Oh, oh no. Oh, my God. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I fall back on the ground and I'm lying there. All right, all right. We get the point. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, at the very beginning, at the very top, you said what? No details? And now we're in the details. You're getting all squirmish. Uh, I just every it, just I just want to point out everything that he has has spoken about. I mean, not the sex stuff, but his very common. Um, what am I like? Other people have said the small yeah. ones seem like workers. Yeah. Um, you know the 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 insects look like praying mantis. Uh, the tall mm -hmm. one. You said the tall one's probably a hybrid. That would most likely seems like that would be the case. Um, but what's interesting to me is that most people, um, with alien abductions, anyways. Um, they don't ever see more than they usually don't see more than one type of alien. That's it, true. It's you know they'll 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 have the tall grays. They'll have Streber did. Right. They'll have the, they'll have the tall one that's in charge. With the the guy said they had a knob on the back of his head. Yeah. Betty and Jason said it was the tall one, um, but he had um, antenna on the front of his head like a bee, is what she said. Um, I I think Streber did see more than one type. Yeah, because I remember like he talked like blue beings too, but and, and then he had he had short grays and the tall grays. I don't know about mantids, but that that's always around too that they're in charge apparently. Although he said someone else was in charge, so we'll link up this documentary. It's it's it is cool. There's a lot of you know weird weird stuff in there. Um, but well, yeah, Just hey, what is it? Mm -hmm. a hybridization program, you know, because this that's been in there too. Yeah, the, the hybrid the program, floor. that's that's definitely a theory that's been kicking around for quite some time now. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the Harvard scientist, God, why am I blanking now? I mean, he did lots of work into this, and he says uh, from the work he's done with abductions, and he did, I think, thousands of interviews. And from, from his work, he said that the message he was getting is that there's a hybridization program happening, they are infiltrating our society, and that they're taking over, you know, and there's he did an interview with Dolan in 2020 before the pandemic. So it was really weird to hear him say stuff like that. And I was like, oh, my God, is that is, is that them taking over? You know, obviously it wasn't. But so here's this article. Air Force vets, Air Force vets theory on UFOs might surprise you. Of course, it's an opinion. Yeah, let's, uh, let's hear it. All right, so he goes through the intro. We need to go through that. He talks about what's been happening uh, with with UAP and UFOs. Um, he talks about Jack Vallee. His where's his? Okay, here we go. So one such hypothesis for these reported objects. You want to read this? Yeah. <coughs> One such hypothesis for these reported objects and why they seem to disappear so quickly is that these craft may not be extraterrestrial at all, that they are actually time travelers from the future. These UFOs and UAPs may be us disappearing in and out of this moment in time to another in the Earth's future. Also, that's a very common theory that's going, going, been going around for some time. Uh, yeah. This suggestion may sound like some sort of plot device out of a science fiction novel or film, but the concept is not a fantasy. Uh, time is a human con construct, a device and measuring tool to help describe our existence within our current reality. It helps us keep track of the season, uh, determine when to plant crops, the correct moment to show up at work, or the kids need to be at the bus stop, and so forth. It's rather a helpful mechanism we've devised. All of this is carried out within the fourth dimension of which, according to our theoretical physics, there could potentially be as many as 11. Each dimension has access to the ones below it. From our fourth dimension, we are freely able to interact with the three below it. Objects, planes, and lines. However, the fifth dimension and above are exclusive, or sorry, are elusive to us. Mm -hmm. If we were to suddenly find ourselves within that realm, the world would look 
completely foreign to us, much like a fish hoisted out of its watery universe and discovering mm-hmm. there is far more beyond. So I love the concept of higher dimensions and stuff because it is actually really scary to think about. Uh, my yeah. favorite explanation of it is, you know, imagine you're looking at a flat surface like the top of a table and there's all these beans on the table, but they're triangles and squares and circles mm-hmm. that, are, that are completely flat not spherical or cube shaped right. or pyramid shaped just flat triangle square and all of these beans interact with each other basically all they see are lines they have left and right and line segments that's all they can mm-hmm. perceive because there is no right. up and down in flat land mm-hmm. but if you're a human sitting at that table and you poke your finger into their world um it would be compl- it would make them go crazy because now there's an up and a down yeah and they wouldn't be able to well, they would see a circle show up they wouldn't that's understand they wouldn't understand yeah. it. Right. They wouldn't understand it. And so it's the same thing when it comes to our reality. If something from a higher dimension stuck its finger down into our reality, you know, we'd see UFOs, we'd see aliens, Sasquatch, ghosts, whatever, because that's our, our human comprehension of our 3D space. Yep. Or, you know, this says we exist in the 4D uh, space because the fourth dimension is time. I've heard that mm-hmm. before. I guess I agree with it, but I kind of don't because... To me, time is a function of the 3D space. Yeah, I agreed. And uh, Grush talks about this too. He talked about the, that coming from the fifth dimension, coming down into the fourth and third dimension. Um, there was that one incident uh, that one vet talked about entering a UFO that was only 30 feet in diameter. But once he went in, it yeah. was as big as two football fields. Very, very so, common amongst UFO abductions. Yeah, so it's that it's like a window from another dimension, like a portal, and then mm-hmm. the the portal itself looks like just a UFO. You know exactly, it's so yeah, very bizarre. So is, it's it's great science fiction material for sure. So I guess this is him. Researcher Mike Ricksacker is the author of several books, including his latest "Travels Through Time: A Walk in the Shadows," and my favorite "Photo Provided." <laughs> <laughs> That it wasn't them. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so that's it's not only his, but it's cool that he's a military vet, U.S. Air Force vet. And we saw their textbooks, right, what, what they go through. So, you know, they know a lot of stuff. They're not allowed to talk about everything. Mm-hmm. Um, Leslie Clean, she was on the Hill. She wrote she was a co-author of that uh, New York Times article in 2017 about about the Tic Tac, mm-hmm. uh, about the about the UFO program, uh, uh, OSAP. Basically the thing that kicked off this whole UFO craze. It did. Yeah. And she, she she has access to all these people like her and Schellenberger. So here she's saying um, that I guess Grush had another a new interview. So they're asking her about that. And she, and she basically verifies what he was saying by interviewing other people. So she's really cool. I'm pretty sure she has books on this subject too. Right. It's a very good distinction. Great question, Robbie, because we have to make that distinction here. We are actually talking about non-human, which means these have been determined to be that through whatever scientific process has been used to make that determination. And all of that information is classified. There was one statement that Grush made in our story alluding to describing the types of processes that are, are used. I don't have it right in front of me. You guys might have it, but... The problem is for us in the public is that all of the data on that is, is classified. But I do want to make the point that he is yes, he's making a very, very distinct dis- uh, distinction here from, you know, between something that's just anomalous and maybe we can't figure it out versus something that has actually been determined to be of non-human origin. There are two different things. And he's talking about the latter here, that these have actually been determined to be no- of non-human origin. And I have spoken to others who have confirmed the same thing. Yeah. Mm. So how would we make sense of this and the recent reporting around UFOs or UAPs? Is this a soft launch of clear awareness of extraterrestrial life, but maybe we don't want to tell the public everything so as to roll it out slowly and give them time to process it? Uh, Can we understand this to be a a soft launch of our awareness of extraterrestrial life based on the craft that we, we know that is there that has been recovered? I mean, it's such a great question, uh, Jessica, and it's so hard to answer that. Um, you know, I'm a I'm a reporter, and so whenever I get some good information that I think is important, I'll put it out there. But I don't really 
know if there's some kind of orchestrated campaign going on behind the scenes. It's hard for me to comment on that. Um, and I also think, you know, the, the thing about extraterrestrial life, that's such a loaded term. I mean, if we have a craft that is not of non-human origin, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's some extraterrestrial aliens that have come here and crashed it or dropped it here. Or I think the, the actual origin of it is so could be much more complicated than that. You know, that the, the concept of extraterrestrial life or what the intelligence might be that's behind the creation of these vehicles is a big unanswered question. Um, and I don't think that's a simple one. Yeah, Gary, that's right. Gary Nolan, uh, Tupacabra had a clip of Gary Nolan saying, you know, how far this goes back and how it's how it just it morphs. Mm -hmm. All we know that's been with us and it all and it keeps morphing just to look just to be better than us or superior to us in a way like because yeah. we're in a technological age then they're tech they show that they're technology and like magic and in the 1800s it was flying ships and uh and and whatever in the b in bc and even not not even bc even in ad i mean there was still like religious stuff happening that that they, they were depicted as gods you know kind of thing yeah so, and i still you know, I mentioned this God about every other episode. I think we're half the phenomenon and mm -hmm. I think we bring in our perception of the world. So if you are, you know, if you believe in, in the gods, you're going to see gods when you see something above you. If you, if you believe in flying chariots, if you're an ancient Roman, um, you're going to see a flying chariot come and take down one of your people or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and people have written that uh, about this also that, that it's part of, us being divine too and that we can we can bring entities into this reality um and they they use our consciousness to do that like like we can actually think them into reality something like that yeah and, i mean that's the that's, whole meditation thing yeah and exactly and, th and that's hidden from us you know and people have been saying that for a long time that the elite want to hide away our power and use us and you know so there's probably a lot of truth in that yeah, I mean, how many fiction stories, no matter what media, have been written where humans have secret powers that are just untapped mm -hmm. that we don't know about? I mean, that whole myth about we only use 10% of our brains, that's where that came from. Yeah, uh, even the Brazilian, uh, the Virginia thing, right? That that being that got caught, right? Isn't that what he said to the doctors? Uh, that They both had the same thought from that being that he said, you have no idea your potential. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. And that's sad, you know, if that Very really sad. Yeah, it is. But then again, maybe that's why there's too many of us. I don't know. Mm -hmm. the and why universe. They, do every, they do it. The the elite do everything in their power to keep us down. Yeah, and then they're they have their private jets and their yachts and you know all that. Uh, but that means all of us can, right? I yeah. I think. If you think it, that's it shall be real. Yeah. Now this interview is long and it's it's magic eyes only. We've been trying to get this book for a long time. It's crazy expensive, but apparently Ryan Wood, um, he, him and his dad run magic, uh, majesticdocuments.com. So he's re-releasing the book, magic eyes only. And nice. there's supposed to be new stuff in there. He's looking for a new forward. It's a pretty boring interview, to be honest. Um, it was hard to find like some, good clips and i actually forgot what i stopped on <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> so i have no idea way to, way to set it up properly let's go <laughs> i'm really sorry <laughs> it, it was excruciating to go through i'm just letting you know that's why yeah well <laughs> some of these interviews can be like that yeah so it's a good listen um i mean henry kissinger just died ah right um and or senior up to his eyeballs ago. yeah Sorry. So, yeah. So he was talking about how he wants to actually go. If, if anyone can do this, please do it. But I would love a book where we talk about the, the, the guys who were in charge of us before and who's in charge of it now. And then he talks about Henry Kissinger dying. And everyone knows Henry Kissinger was, like he said, up to his eyeballs in this. Yeah. And also no. just up to his and eyeballs. So now he oh, yeah. And genocides. and <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, he's a horrible person. And depopulation a and control of food. And of course, he lived until he was 390 years old. <laughs> I know. How old was he? He was 100, right? Exactly he was old 100. as shit. I know that. <laughs> he looked like it. he was pulling up his pants up to his poor guy. He probably had like. No, a... not poor guy. Screw that guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to say it because he'll probably adopt this, but I have a story I'll, I can tell you later. Okay, good. So let's see what Ryan says. His papers, which were restricted. Uh, at the Library of Congress Manuscript Division um, 
hopefully are now open that you could begin to better understand. Um, I tried to start a correspondence with uh, Kissinger, but it never never happened. Mm. I, I mean, I, I sent him letters, and but it, it, but he started his career in military intelligence um, in and around the time of of Roswell et al., uh, and he, he was clearly in the loop. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was. And you know, wh why does he go to China and uh, you know have have powwows with China or have this global statesman uh, skill uh, or reputation? Um, because he can talk about UFOs and ETs with all those other high-level people and mm -hmm. being not official government um, liaison in any way. Um, and China's got to have, Russia's got to have, yeah. um, and several of the countries have got to have um, <laughs> material. Oh my yeah. God, Ryan. And He's a much better writer than he is a speaker. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's so speaking's, uh, it's not easy for some people. Anyway, no, yeah. <laughs> if you need something uh, to help you sleep tonight, go ahead, put that on and no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's a great interview, though. I love MajesticDocuments.com. I have to say that. I absolutely love it. Go there. Read those documents. They're just fascinating to go through. They're from the 40s, even early 40s, you know. Um, anyway, very cool stuff. We, we also covered on the show that Ryan's father sold that stuff to that one tech guy. Remember, he, oh, yeah. he left the tech industry. He's when he paid him $500,000. <laughs> And he said, once they're verified, I'll I'll produce the book, and that's the book that that Ryan's talking about. So yeah, pretty cool. You sent me this; it just coincides with everything, right? In twenty twenty four. Yeah, it's just it's showing the um, what's that saying? I can't remember what the it. It's a graph. You, it's a yeah. graph. Can you click on it? it it's showing. So I want. I was hoping you could resume. Yeah, I can't. Resume. What does it say? It's showing the. Okay, hold oh. on. We go. There were 565 bank failures from 2001 through 2023, uh, and it shows the different years. It shows their total assets versus the bank figures, and completely, it shows it completely skyrocketed in 2007. Of course, we had that horrible uh, collapse in 2008, mm -hmm. and then once again, the same thing is going on where total assets of banks completely skyrocketed 2022, and. Yeah. Um, and it, and it looks like the uh, bank failures. I don't think the bank failures are going to happen again. The U.S. government proved that they're going to bail out, yeah. you know, whoever they can. Most of them, yeah, Democrats. Yeah. And <laughs> so here we are. Um, but it's yeah. Like, and the thing I have with these graphs and patterns, it's never the same. Is the thing like the, thing, the people in charge never repeat the same thing? It might be something else. I'm not saying it's yeah. something app. It's just not going to happen the same way, you know. Um, and 2020, obviously, it looked like it was a bailout for everyone. They bailed out the people, and they bailed out the banks and the they corporations. Didn't even, they didn't even bail out the people very well. I mean, kind of, yeah. <laughs> was it 1,500 bucks we got, something like that? Man, lucky you. I think it was 12. I think the first one. I don't, oh, sorry, 1,200. Yeah, 1,200. Yeah, so stupid. So <laughs> stupid. <laughs> and but then California also gave right, yeah like 750, something like that. Twice or something like that, um, but the PPP—that's right. That's what—that's what it was. They—if you had a business and you took and you had a PPP, I mean, that bailed you out. Built out a lot of businesses. They were able to pay pay off debt. Um, it was huge amounts. I forget how much it was. So easy to do. Too. I remember doing it on on Bank of America. It was like click, 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 click. Next, 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 and boom, you know. And then getting forgiven was just as easy. It was just a wizard. And you talk about tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's pretty wild stuff. It is wild stuff. So, yeah, I mean, uh, and I'm sure it helped out a lot of people. So, brace yourselves, as always, you know, um, plan for the worst, right? Yeah, and stop making fun of people who prep, who they call them preppers. Yeah. Oh, you don't want to look at this guy. He wants to be safe in case the world collapses. What an idiot. <laughs> yeah, and now but this is all coinciding with that movie. Uh, leave the world behind, which we so spoke about. I stand by it. Terrible, terrible movie. <laughs> yeah, but then, then of course, what happened a week later? Did you hear that? So Zuckerberg now is building a He's bunker, building, building his bunker in Hawaii. Yeah, I yeah. did see that. 
and then this, you know. So it's all the same stuff, the same messaging. It's like predictive programming of what's <laughs> to come. Again, hoping for the best, planning for the worst. I, mean, I have three months of food, I think. Maybe, maybe two months. I don't know. Not too long. It's not like I have a huge thing going, but just in case. And don't forget, if all of a sudden you hear like the lights go out and there's a bunch of shaking outside, go ahead, fill up your bathtub or multiple bathtubs if you have them and sinks. Get some of that water that you can boil for later. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Exactly. Well, and, and you can buy these great Swiss ones. They're not cheap, though, but you can even uh, like these pumps, the Swiss pumps. Um, it can even have like really it can be really bad water and it will purify it pretty quick. Nice. That's um, a good good idea. Yeah, they're they're not cheap though, but still, I mean, if you need water and it's just like a puddle outside of disgusting stuff, it will give you clean water from it. And here is the end of the world as we know it with Whitney Webb. Oh, good. She's a great author. She's an author of uh, some great books on like Epstein and uh, A Nation Under Blackmail is her book. Uh, t- two books. She's a genius, man. She's so smart. Like probably too smart. She writes. All her articles are so long. I think uh, 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 Unlimited Hangout is her dot com is her website. Oh, so nice. Okay. As soon as I want to go, you can go read her articles there. So here she's being interviewed. I, I think the best part of the interview was her AI, her opinion on AI and where it's going. So we, you have to listen to this. And I think she's she's spot on here, probably because she's a writer, too. And she knows like what these people are planning and, you know, just how terrible they are. And for people who are watching, um, this is what a professional podcast setup looks like. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of people do. Um, like a more advanced search engine. Yeah, totally. But who who owns AI, right? Uh, it's pretty much Silicon Valley company. So like even OpenAI, Sam Altman's thing, uh, that's essentially like owned by Microsoft, right? And so you mm-hmm. have what Microsoft, Google, Amazon, uh, Oracle, all of these companies essentially owning like almost everything. Um, mm-hmm. And all of those companies are contractors for military, the military and intelligence, right? Guess throw Palantir in the mix too. And uh, when you consider something like Palantir, they profile people. They suck up all of your data and then they profile you. Um, and Palantir can profile like whether or not they deem you subversive or not. And what happens when AI, you know, gets access of that and gets put in control of things like humanitarian aid, like they're talking about doing, um, or in charge of, um, you know, the government itself? which is also talked about in the Schmidt Kissinger book. Um, it gets complicated. So That's right. She said Schmidt of Google and Kissinger. So they wrote a book together about AI. So hmm. yeah, she does all that research. And you know what's going on in Gaza? You know, it's AI who's choosing the targets. Really? So now it's choosing who lives. That. Yes, I'll send you that about who lives and dies. It's an AI that's picking Woof. the targets. Yeah, so now in you know in charge of like grants. Imagine like government grants or loans. Who gets that kind of money? You know, so if you don't behave or you're like she said, you're a dissident, you're not going to get that money. It's just yeah. it, it's, it's the uh, what's it called? It's the um, never mind. What does China do? Where they oh judge- yeah, social credit. It's the social credit. Yeah, that's what I was trying to yeah, say. Thank you. Exactly. You know, a lot of people have been talking about the coming sort of like social credit oh, paradigm, for go. example. <laughs> what happens if there's a big crisis? Uh, your country is like a war zone or the, the economy collapses and you're dependent on humanitarian aid or some sort of aid from the government or uh, some other group and there isn't enough for everyone, right? And so they decide, oh, well, it's fair to put super intelligent AI in charge of it. And then that AI is like, oh, well, this person's been very compliant and hasn't committed all of these thought crimes, but not you, (laughs) you know, who is it going to decide to give the food rations to and stuff like that? You know, that's the risk of a lot of this stuff when it gets put in charge of too many systems. Um, And then there's like a whole other side to it when when you're dealing with stuff like AI weaponry, which we're seeing being used right now in the Israel-Gaza conflict to a significant degree where they're deciding assassination targets, uh, you know, suppose people that they're, they're deeming to be Hamas affiliated, which no one knows 
exactly how they're determining that. I mean, it could be someone who is a second cousin of someone in Hamas or something. Um, we don't really know because there's no transparency. But obviously, the fact that they've gone from before this AI algorithm to identifying something like 15 to 20 targets a day to identifying hundreds of targets a day, something's going on. And there's a huge issue there with what if that AI... Uh, is using, you know, social media activity to decide who lives and who dies, literally. And what happens when that gets, that goes, that, I mean, that kind of technology gets exported. I mean, Israel's tech sector specifically is known for testing um, all sorts of tech on Palestinian surveillance tech and, and weapons tech, and then they export it abroad. Israel's, uh, you know, defense tech and defense industry is massive. It's like, I think, one of the biggest parts of their GDP, right? So. You know, this isn't just going to stay there. And AI weaponry has also been tested in Ukraine to a significant degree. And there's a lot of people, the same people that own, that created Palantir, essentially Peter Thiel. You know, a lot of that money is behind, you know, the AI weaponry stuff today. Um, that's troubling stuff. And then there's another issue of whether AI is actually accurate or not. Um, so, you know, they'll right. say, uh, like with, with facial recognition, I think there was um, uh, a... a a report a few years ago in the UK that a lot of the facial recognition stuff that the the Met Police and, and other law enforcement groups are using are it, it insanely inaccurate, uh, but they want to not they want to continue using it and like deepen its involvement in identifying people, whether it's like at live events and all sorts of stuff. Um, and I mean, it was insanely inaccurate. I mean, I can't remember the exact amount, but it was like under 50 percent accurate. So like flipping a coin is more accurate in that case. And what happens when AI algorithms that choose who lives and who dies, uh, you know, are put in charge of stuff and they're like 70% accurate or less? Because, I mean, the government's really corrupt with contractors. Like they don't always pick the best contractor for the job. So someone has connections that gets their AI in charge and they oversell they, their AI and say it's 90% metric, uh, 95 accurate, but it's not audited by an independent company, right? And so it's actually like in reality, 65% accurate or something. And you're putting it in charge of like stuff that has a major effect on people's lives. That kind of stuff is happening. And it's, I mean, I'm talking about stuff that hasn't necessarily quite happened yet, but we're headed there. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty bleak. Uh, Dude, I mean, I, I use AI all the time, you know, and after listening to this, I'm like, you know, I should probably continue writing, you know, like really yeah. writing and then it can like, you know, fix it up instead of saying, oh, you know, because usually usually I, like, I would brief it. It's not my personal stuff. I wouldn't do it like for clients and stuff, but like uh, like personal projects I have, I don't have time to, to like, you know, sit there and write an article or something, right? I'll brief it. I'm like, all right, this is what I want to focus on. These are the keywords I want to do, blah, blah, blah. Write it up, right? And it, and it right. would do that. And, and she was saying, you do not, don't, she goes, they, they, they want to dumb down people and they don't want you writing anymore. They don't want you critically thinking. And she says that they want AI to write 98% of the content on the internet, you know? And we know what these AIs, they're, they're, it's complete misinformation. I mean, I've, in the beginning, I used to argue with them, and it's because they get the informa their information from the New York Times, from CNN, from these sources. That's where it relies on, like Wikipedia. And, and we know all those are heavily censored. They're the ones who push misinformation, yeah. and that's where it's getting its information from. So it's just really scary to that this is where we're headed. It's this great, you know, unending cycle that just will never end. It is an un ending cycle and what if what if these nhis have the same thing where where they create like this this like godlike ai which is in charge of them not in charge of them but that they're dependent on mm -hmm. and then we're kind of we're trying to mimic that or the elite are trying to mimic that she actually gets through with i want i want to get to that part where she says what they're trying to do they're trying to entrench themselves more uh well just so so i know i know on twitter i'm pretty sure i've interacted with uh, ai bots now like there's the very well, obvious sure. ones that you can tell. There's mm -hmm. a very obvious ones. You're like, I know that's an AI bot because they they see something I post and they write a automated response to that. But there's other times where I've started a conversation. I'm hmm, I think that's a, like I haven't been a hundred percent sure it's an AI bot. You know, in your head you're like, there's a suspicion there. But also, I've used AI to create content 
sometimes I, if I'm in a rush, like mm-hmm. silly things like uh, own a football team, write my program notes. I just put in the things I want to say and let the AI write it. But clearly, if I'm doing that, people are going to be doing more advanced things. But it kind of put me in this place, Whitney, where I'm thinking it feels like the internet is going to become unusable. Like, I might just reject it. It already is. It's going to become very different uh, for a lot of different reasons. So I guess the risk with using, like, chat GPT or generative AI, for example, is, like, if you use it too much that, like, you can't write without it. Mm -hmm. Right? That's, like, the stuff people need to try and and manage, I think. Um, And uh, as far as, you know, what happens when all the content becomes chat GPT essentially, right? I mean, it's not really going to be very useful to people, but there's a lot of people that aren't really going to be able to notice so much uh, the difference because it's like legible English and it kind of makes sense. And, you know, uh, but it's not going to be like human thought anymore. Uh, Though there was a problem identified, I think several months ago that once, you know, these, AI algorithms start training off of data that humans didn't produce and it, it's training off of data or like content that it produced itself or another generative AI uh, produced it. Its output becomes like googly guck nonsensical oh, <laughs> stuff. Um, so, I mean, it might just break itself. We'll see what happens or if they're able to they're just I guess, remedy it. that. Um, but regardless of that, the internet is going to change a lot. And this is a very like separate thing than what we've been talking about so far. Uh, but there's a, a deliberate push to regulate the internet. So B- before we go into that, can I ask you one more question about AI then? Of course. Is there any good you see in it? I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously there is some truth to the fact that it, Oracle and, uh, you know, all these other companies, Amazon, what have you, because uh, they have too much power. The people in charge have obvious problematic agendas um and they basically at least in the u.s they own the government (laughs) i mean they basically control the government the tech billionaires fund almost all the politicians uh they have access to all of the data of the military and intelligence agencies and frankly uh the silicon valley companies and the national security state in the u.s have fused a hundred percent they are the same blob you can't tell where one ends and one begins anymore that's highly problematic. That's fascism, right? Yep. When corporations and government fuse. So yeah, Silicon Valley fascism has arrived, at least in the United States. I think a lot of people just haven't realized it yet. So those companies we cannot feed and they feed off of our data. They've been saying for years, data is the new oil. So instead of the oil barons of the early 20th century, these are the data barons of now. We need to divest from them if we do not want (laughs) them to have extreme entrenched power. Because a lot of these guys are transhumanists um, with the view that humans must merge with machine, not that the humans that want to merge with machine can right? And a lot of this stuff becomes like highly problematic um, after a while, and including a lot of their visions for how human society needs to be organized. You know, they're very clearly the majority of them not interested in democracy at all. They're interested in some sort of technocracy um, or some sort of authoritarian, very controlled environment. She obviously doesn't live in the U.S. anymore, so she's in... She lives in Chile, but she's so spot on with her research. And yeah, and she, I mean, yeah. great, great, great points. And I really like that she actually knows the definition of fascism. Um, yeah, fascism yeah. is not just when someone says something you don't like, um, which right. is now what it's equated to today. A large part of fascism is what she said: corporations and the government um, combining and becoming Excuse one. Yeah, and and yeah, now fascism is just throwing around. If 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 you're just a person that wants freedom, remember that was they were oh, yeah. being called fa- like in, in during COVID, like yeah. you, were, you were a fascist if you were against the or you know against like the mass and it just goes to show how brainwashed and or stupid um, the <laughs> yeah. general American public is. If you're against the government overstretching its reach, that makes you a fascist, and that makes no no sense whatsoever. On that, how can those people look in the mirror and go, Yeah, that person's a fascist because they don't like what the government's doing? You know what's cool though? Actually, that interviewer who was interviewing her, he said that when uh, he, he's awake, and I think that's why he's interviewing her, but but he was all for the mandates, the lockdowns, and all that. Um, he, it made sense to him, and then he just said, Wait a minute, this, this is something's going on here. And then he started. So it, they really overplayed their hand in COVID because it woke up so many mm-hmm. people that would not have woken up to this. We just, 
you know, like, like, I guess, like little kids, you know, trust their parents. It's the teenagers who go, no, yeah. rebel. Right. <laughs> so they're growing up. You sent me this. It's so funny. This is so, from one of my, my favorite places, Stupid Poll, where people come <laughs> together to talk about how stupid politics is, essentially. But again, it is a it is a um, subreddit focused on critiquing capitalism and identity politics from a Marxist perspective. But you funny. don't you don't just get the Marxists in there. You get a wide range of people, and everyone's generally pretty polite. Anyway, good for you that you don't have an echo chamber that you go out, you know, and see the other perspectives because you know Marxists usually are um are for big government and mm -hmm. and government control so and you, you'll you'll see i mean a, the, a lot of people on the sub are truly marxist and they do believe in that they do believe the government should step mm -hmm. in and take a larger role but what they have great umbrage with is how they do it and they're always mm -hmm. making fun of like you know they can't give us free health care but thank god if you get a ticket they have to use your proper uh pronoun pronoun or whatever <laughs> new lives new law in california by the way i don't know if, if only we get the right people in government if yeah exactly that, right right that's what, and they're, they're trapped in that you yep. know humans are not angels or our system is not angelic but um, anyway i mean yeah this article you're right but this article is great because it just goes to show the disconnect that the democrats have with with mr biden yeah, and here it is. Here's the MSNBC article. Um, Taylor Swift could save Joe Biden in 2024. No, seriously. <laughs> it's so it's so bizarre seeing this. I mean, I just saw an ad the other day where Obama was speak like it was Biden. He was talking about something. And goes and then I'll have my friend come in, come out and talk. And and Obama had yeah. to come out and talk for him. And it's like this is the guy you guys want to be president who can't even speak for himself. You have to you have to back him up with celebrities. I mean, if you remember when Trump won in 2016, the Democrats were bringing in, in the entire music industry, right? They had Beyonce on. That it was, and I, I gotta say this: when they had their events, they looked amazing. They they spent a lot of money on on how these events looked. Mm -hmm. It was just crisp, it was clean, and they had all these elite celebrities there, and none of that worked. And I think that's why they really lost it. You know, is like our 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 the people are just revolting, and they're. Uh, re revolting yeah they yeah. don't want they don't want it anymore so here they are again thinking yeah. it's going to work this time it's just like speaking of covid um when all of those celebrities are in their mansions and they're going oh this is evil we're locked in our homes where what are we going to do and it's like yeah shut the you're living in like a a six digit no i'm sorry like an eight nine digit yeah, building easily. yeah <clears throat> you know and the rest of us are struggling to eat <laughs> yeah what are you yeah, they're, exactly. They're outside of their pool and like giving yeah. the like no one cares. Or they um, had that cringy thing where they all sang Imagine by John Lennon. Remember oh that? My God, that was so bad. That was <laughs> that so put a lot bad. of people that put a oh. lot of people off celebrities. It was so funny to see. It completely ruined them. I mean, and uh, it's, but see, so not this. I'm shocked reading this because apparently she made a billion dollars from her tour this year. Uh, and more. Look, look at this. More than half of all Americans count themselves as Swift fans. Yeah, I mean, it. I don't know. Um, for people who've been watching the NFL this year or Chiefs fans, first of all, go fuck yourself. Second of all, uh, Taylor Swift <laughs> is dating a player on the on the Chiefs, and like every chance they get, uh, whoever's broadcasting the game will show her reacting to stuff in the stands. I mean, it's just, me. it's just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Wow. It's like Dave Chappelle had a really funny part in his stand up uh, when they were talking. He was talking about 9-11. Um, one of the news anchors goes, well, what is, you know, let's see what Jaw Rule has to say about this. And he was making a joke about how, like, I mean, that's just the culture we have today, like where all these people don't give a shit about what celebrity says about what, because who they're nobody. They're people who can pretend well. Exactly. Swifties spend approximately ninety three million dollars per show. It's she's so generic. I don't understand how she got so popular. And she's got she's got I'm gonna rip on Taylor Swift now. So this is what our podcast has come to. She has horse mouth, first of all. She's <laughs> she? she she's got you board body. Where's she? How did I'm showing her? Because yeah, sorry, there's nothing to show. She's a ghost. Yeah. She turned sideways and you can't find her. Ah, <laughs> she is. Yeah, I think you're like her, her knees uh, click. <laughs> oh god. I mean she looks like she looks like a scarecrow. Look at these guys on MSNBC just like talking about ha ha ha. What a panel. I don't even, I, I don't even want to put the thing on. There she is. Oh, she looks different. 
Well, no, she's in heavily, she's photoshopped and in a whole lot of makeup on time. Look, they have to like cock her hip out at a 90 degree angle to make it look like she's got curves. She, I don't think Taylor Swift is attractive. I think she has some skill, but I think her success is not merit based. That's for damn sure. She At least she shaves her armpits. Yeah, well, or it could have been photoshopped out. I don't know what Travis Kelsey <laughs> is into. <laughs> so yeah, so they think that that she can save the Democrat Party and Biden. Well, and, and... the funny thing, I just saw that thing up there. It sends right wingers into a tailspin, as if anyone on the right gives two shits what Taylor Swift has to say. <laughs> of course, yeah, they just make fun of her. Why time chose Taylor Swift as its person of the year? Oh, what a surprise! They they always give each other awards too. Mm -hmm. Swift is quite clearly a Democrat. No, no shit. shit. <laughs> She, in 2018, she endorsed two Democratic candidates in her adopted home state of Tennessee. I thought Tennessee was like a red state. Well, she just said she supported the Democratic candidates. I mean, uh -oh. um, the other thing is, I'm if I remember correctly, I think her dad worked in the like music um, industry already. Like, so she wasn't this like up and comer right. that was. She got lucky or something. I mean, she was literally like you're right. Mm -hmm. I think both her parents now. I, no, I, think, I think it is both her parents, yeah. Yeah, both her parents. So she was writing songs in the beginning. They brought her into the studio and all that. So, you know, uh, Taylor Swift can beat Trump again in 2024. Uh, it's going to be crazy. When did she be beat Trump the first time? Yeah. Was Taylor, <laughs> no, they have to cheat. Was Taylor Swift president and I just forgot about those four years or something? I know. Like, what kind of, like, uh, headline is that? But it is MSNBC known for its... Uh, Liberal for bias. Its, you're right. All right. So usually we don't cover politics, but it was funny. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't too negative. It's it's here, more of it's more of just our politics here in the United States has become just embarrassing at this point. It is, and I, it, it was great because it followed you saying that you know that we're a dumbed down population, and I I don't think that's really true. I think there is a a faction that has been extremely dumbed down. The the ones who completely stayed with the program after 2020. Uh, you know, that's that's the faction that they're speaking to. And I, I don't think mm -hmm. there's large, large amount of people. It might be might be kids. You know, yeah, I don't know. About this stuff. but as as we know, kids don't vote. That's true. I, I'm sure the Democrats would love to lower it to like 16 or something. They've tried. They've yeah. tried. <laughs> uh, so this, the Hill again, they're, they're covering the UFO subject a lot. So Schellenberger has a new report. And he came and did an interview with them, a crazy interview. I mean, just insane, the stuff he talks about. Uh, so, yeah, let's give this one a listen. Probably not all of it. Yeah. Wow, we're at 120 already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Author Michael Schellenberger writes that multiple sources have confirmed whistleblower David Grush's claim that the United States government possesses a number of non-human vehicles. These sources are, quote, either high-ranking intelligence officials, former intelligence officials, or individuals who could be verified as being involved in the United States government UAP efforts for three or more decades, according to his reporting. Schellenberger writes that the individuals said they had seen or been presented with, quote, credible and verifiable evidence that the U.S. government and U.S. military contractors possess at least 12 or more alien spacecraft, some of which they shared with AARO or the All Domain Arrow. Arrow. Anomaly Resolution Office, quote, which AARO has refused to provide Congress. The office reportedly said it has not discovered any verifiable information and, quote, because it does not have the authority to verify it and may mm. not want to verify it. Joining us now to discuss is Twitter Files author and author of Apocalypse Never, Michael Schellenberger. Thank you for being with us, Michael. Good to be with you. So confirmation, aliens are real. This is exciting. What do you make <laughs> of the Baker's dozen of alien spacecraft that we have? Well, I think it's it's worth just pointing out that this is very shocking. Uh, the whistleblower in question, David Grush, used the term ontological shock, which is a little bit of jargon. But what he How means is that. Oh, they didn't say like June or something like that. Although what? unless this has been reshared because um, they're acting like Grush just came out. And that was that was this summer when that happened. So what's happening at the end here? Yeah, so I, I think this is an old one for some reason, but it's, it's being shared again. Um, Joe Rogan, 
He does a 180 on UFO disclosure. Now believes it's real. Said, I mean, he used to, he used to always. Be, I mean, his logo is a saucer. Yeah. Now now believes it's real. It says the boring, slow, bureaucratic nature of this disclosure adds to its credibility. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't know. I definitely think he's thought it's at least there's something to it. You know, I have a hard time believing he was thinking the whole thing was fake until just now. Yeah, he's not. He's just. Let's get right into it. Yeah. Oh. You know, I make if he does have firsthand knowledge, he's not allowed to say it until now. That is interesting. Yeah, because I had, I was also under the impression he didn't have firsthand knowledge. So he did, I guess, on the podcast say that he has some firsthand knowledge. I maybe I didn't catch that. He did say it very quick. Yeah, he said it very quick. You know what? You know, uh, edging. But edging is, of course, yeah. <laughs> that's what this feels like. It feels like BDSM level, getting your cock right on the oh precipice God. of coming and then yeah. slowing down and then edging and then slowing down. Mm -hmm. It's so frustrating. It's the, when we talked about disclosure in the old days, the dream of disclosure, no one thought it would be this like slow drip, bureaucratic. Right, <laughs> slow fucking drip. It's so frustrating. I, I I don't pay attention to it anymore. I mean, if they, but isn't that like if you knew anything about human psychology, and I'm sure they do, wouldn't that be the very best way to release this stuff? Yeah, to make it irrelevant. Yeah, that people don't care about it anymore because yeah. it's it's so boring. Totally, they made the most exciting thing boring. They yes, fucking sir. ruined it. Government they did it with bureaucracy. They just fucking just. <laughs> They just signal jammed it. <laughs> now it's just annoying. You now don't I'm care. Now I'm back in. Now I think it's real. You do? Because I think that's what they would do. If you did have something real and you wanted to release it. Slow you, drip. Yeah, slow drip it and get – people are goofy. You just give them time and they forget or they don't care anymore. Talk and, about your redactions and your mm -hmm. fucking permissions mm -hmm. and just – just cover the whole thing up in a bureaucratic web of linguistic it. garbage. Yeah. And then people just get annoyed. And when they do show up, no one's even going to care anymore. Wouldn't you do it that way? I guess. I guess. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? Yeah. yeah. Let's get right into it. Yeah. yeah. Oops. And, you know, Jamie, pull that up. I'd make if he... Oh, yeah. Um, so. I mean, I, I never thought he, he – I know he said, like, oh, it's all a sorry up. I didn't believe him. It's, well, he, it's what, he, what he said at the end, is he goes, I'm back on board, which implies that he I, – and I can I could see that, I suppose. Um, it was so disheartening to see all the stuff that was told – we were told was coming out and then it wasn't. And then you that would make you think, okay, this is a sigh up. And then to see, you know, all the proof and then being like, yeah, okay, this actually does make sense. Yeah. All right, so what do you got here? <clears throat> so this is from Richard Geldreich on, on Twitter. Uh, in 1953, Adamski wrote about small drone-like devices used for observation. He also claimed that these devices were being used to observe atomic tests, which we now know. Did he make all this stuff up in 1953? If so, quite creative for the early 50s. Um, mm -hmm. So he goes, he goes, they were about three feet in diameter, of shiny, smooth material and shaped rather like two shallow plates or hubcaps turned upside down and joined at the rim so that the central part was a few inches thick. I learned, however, that such disks varied in size from about 10 inches to 12 feet in diameter, depending on the amount of equipment carried. They contained highly sensitive apparatus, which not only guided each little saucer perfectly in its desired path of flight, but also transmitted back to the mothership full information on every kind of vibration taking place in the area under observation, sound, radio, light, and even thought waves. It, it sounds like the stuff we have now. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's it's, it is. See, this is why they always say science fiction be, uh, becomes science fact eventually. Yeah. I mean, he said he was a, he was a, uh, an experiencer, right? And, you know, people do argue against that. Mm -hmm. He was at he, he was talking at a flight deck. Six women worked quickly and nimbly as they fed instructions and flight data to the waiting discs. I remember noting the resemblance to six women playing in a pantomime. A silent concerto, concerto, commented Adamski. It was fascinating to see how, when a disc had received full instructions, one of the trap doors would open and the disc would slide smoothly into the orifice 
passing through airlocks before hurling away into outer space on its mission. Just crazy stuff. I mean, so cool. It is really cool. 1953. Mm-hmm. And we're just we're seeing drones do that kind of stuff too. I mean, and now our like our phones can basically do all that. I mean, they yep. don't fly, but I'm saying like Give it time. they sense everything. They sense everything, right? They listen to everything. They know what angle they are at because they have those tiny gyroscopes in there. Or okay, forget that. What about these mood rings now that they have? Mm-hmm. It has everything in there. Like how many steps you're taking, what what your temperature is, what your mood is, you know, and that's very tight. Ty- Imagine gyroscopes, how big they used to be. Now they're fitting into rings. Yeah. I mean, I mean it, it just, it, it's that thing we were talking about earlier with uh, the internet and quantum, um, you know, yeah. mechanic. everything is just growing exponentially. Um, and, and in fact, speaking of, of phones, and we've known this for a while, you mentioned something when we were together for Christmas dinner or lunch. Mm-hmm. really early old person dinner yeah. um you had mentioned uh i can't remember what it was and i don't even know what the ad was but you had mentioned some sort of product or something that i had never heard of or seen and then later um i was kept seeing ads for it on youtube and i was just like what the hell man it was, like yeah it was listening yeah i mean now i don't know if they even listen to thoughts for some reason because i would think something i would see ads for it how, how does that happen I, i'm in digital marketing in some sense you know and you, you can only figure out what people are browsing, what they're searching for, and then you can target them, right? Or, right. or even listening, right, by, by the mic. But how, how do you do if someone just thinks something? I don't, I don't know. Uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, that's scary stuff. It would not surprise me if we're there already. I hate to, I I hate mean, to use the phrase, this is literally 1984, um, but here yeah. we are. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah, so... Th- We'll we'll link up everything as usual. Read the entire page that Adamski wrote. I, I really thought he was debunked, but that's just crazy. If he maybe he was part of the military back then, I don't know. Maybe he was a military. Yeah, could have been. Or it's a psyop. A uh, psyop. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, psyops. We've been so psyop. Everything's a psyop. Yeah. And that's what hurts me about the the truth community too, or like the conspiracy community. And now that like they they. Unfortunately, they think all this is just a psyop, which it, it yes can be because it has been used to psyop the people. I mean, I, I mean the UFO subject, but mm-hmm. historically it wasn't like that. You know, that's what made the government clamp down and make the National Security Act so they can control the psyop. Yeah, you know? maybe they were being psyoped. You know, I don't even know what the word <laughs> psyop means anymore. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a word. No. So you shared this with me. No, this is, I thought fun. this was, I thought, I think this is dumb, but it's funny. Um, it's a picture of Andrew Jackson on the $20 bill side by side. It's one of those photos that's cut in half and you can show half of one person's face and half of another. Andrew Jackson's portrait on the $20, $20 bill and Epstein's face from Amazing. some paparazzi photo or whatever. And yeah. the similarities are quite striking. Again, I think this is more goofy than anything else. Um, this helpful person circled all the spots that seemed too coincidental. And I will admit, yeah. it's a very wild photo. It is a wild photo. And uh, people don't know how he made his billions, right? They still don't know how the guy had his billions and how he had islands. And I mean, we know why he had access to like um, celebrities and politicians because that was his job. Yeah. <laughs> Honey pots. But yeah, Andrew Jackson, and it's crazy because wasn't he the one who was against the banks like, on his deathbed? He goes, I beat the bank, the, the second national bank of the U.S. I think he dissolved it. Well, clearly from this picture, he wasn't on his deathbed at all. He's faking his death. <laughs> Pornhub blocks access in Montana. <laughs> we had a conversation about this. Yeah, we did. Um, so, yeah. No, it's just because so Montana passed a new law saying yep. you have to have age verification to access Pornhub. Pornhub basically just and they've been in this situation many times, different countries, different states. Basically, they, they said, OK, we're just not if you have an IP address originating in Montana, we're not going to allow you to see it. Um, it's been challenged, I think, under the First Amendment, freedom of speech and expression. Um <laughs> But the thing that you and I talked about, which I think is more important than what this article is talking about, is just how much of an influence porn is having on children nowadays. Yeah, it's it's disturbing, and you know, not 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 a lot of parents actually care what their kids do online, which is crazy. I mean, 
You know, there's there's many tools that you can filter out these. Things. Yeah, they can go around them, but it's a pain in the ass. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, you don't want someone a kid sh- searching something by accident or opening something that was sent to them, or you know. So you want tools to like block these kind of things. But many of these kids just, you know, get get um influenced or they watch it really early, like at eight years old. You know, yeah. as early as that, and it messes with their development and messes with their a way of seeing the other sex that like, you know like women and because you know obviously in porn it's they're they're just um it's not they're not representations of what women are like in the real of world reality no of course not. Right. so it really it gets kids addicted uh, it ruins their way of of having relationships uh with women obviously it's you know if people can't have relationships and you're not gonna, not gonna have marriages you're not gonna have kids so yeah, I mean it's it's a symptom of a larger well it's part it's it's creating larger and larger issues. I mean, I keep seeing articles about how uh young men, I think it's under 30 or like more than like it's like it's a crazy amount. Like 60% are single or have been single their whole lives. Mm-hmm. But stuff like access to pornography means oh, I don't have to get a girl. I can just exactly. go and watch this and it yeah. and, and and then, you know, oh, I don't have to talk to this girl. I can, you know, go yep. home and hop on the internet. And yep. so you, it stunts your development completely, and it just makes you a socially awkward uh, yep. weirdo. And that's why a lot of these states are doing this. You know, they want they they they're noticing this is happening, and they're trying to make these laws. And all this is saying is a new state law that requires websites to verify the age. That's all they're asking to do: just verify their age. And what do they do? They just block it. Yeah, I mean, anyone who knows what how the internet works knows that you, porn is what is it if they got rid of all there's a really funny quote from the show scrubs if they got rid of all the porn on the internet there would only be one side le- site left <laughs> and it would be bring back the porn.com <laughs> um, but what my, my point is there's more than one option to find porn but that's not the point yeah, um, yeah. no it's not the point and it's, and it's really easy to verify age you don't need to have an id i mean i i i i, I have e-commerce sites and some of them require people to be over 18 and all mostly all they have to do is put their, put their date of birth and Mm-hmm. These tools can verify that that's the person. You know, I don't know how they do it. It's public information, um, but it might know. be a cost thing. I don't even. I I doubt it's even a real verification because it has every. Because you know, I used to before it was outlawed in California. I used to buy all my vapes online and have them shipped mm-hmm. to me. And all you'd have to do is put in your date of birth, but you're not. Oh, I guess you know what? No, no, no. That was after. I was going to say you have to put in your driver's license. That part oh. is verified, but just to view the website. You know, it just brings up how old are you? Or what's your date of birth? And oh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not talking about that. No, I'm talking about like actually verify. So it uses public information, your 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 computer, your IP address, and if and if it can't figure it out, it'll ask you to upload your ID. Interesting. Um, but in the very rare instances, yeah, it uses public information to do that. Uh, yeah. But I think if since they have millions of people on here, it might cost them millions of dollars, and maybe that's why they block it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but still, it's just wrong to show this stuff to kids because it's not the porn from the 70s i mean this is like it's it they just keep pushing the envelope you know yeah i mean it's just and it's free and it's just ridiculous kids should not have access to it Uh, well and and just really quick that's what i was trying to get at earlier is just it's everywhere it's so and you know you can get it on your phone computer whatever right and these kids have phones and yeah they can have access to the sites and I mean, I've we've had we've had uh, conversations with parents in the area here, and the stories I heard were ads. sorry, the stories I heard were, were horrific, and these are eleven year olds. Yeah, I'm so, trying to remember at what age I first saw a boob on the internet, or maybe it was a movie or something. I was definitely older than eleven. I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I think, I was, think yeah, I was around, I think twelve, but but I, I didn't have the internet when I was twelve. You know, someone yeah, well, showed internet- me a picture in the bathroom. I was like, oh wow, and yeah, it was just boobies. It was the internet- but now. The, the internet was such a different beast back then. You know, it would take thirty minutes to download a picture of anything, not just porn. <laughs> yeah, 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 and videos would take forever to load up. Um, um I ha- I have a I I kind of don't know if I want to share this. <laughs> I I have a I have a just to show Do it. What, okay all right fine uh so when I was growing up we'd have to um take the trash and the recycling down 
uh, the alleyway near our house. It was like, you know, about a, it was like two or three blocks away. It was like the community drop off center. And it was one of those things where they were big enough where you could squeeze into. And me and my buddy, I don't know how we figured this out. We figured out you can squeeze in there and dig through the magazines and look for, look for dirty magazines. And I don't even think, I don't even know if there is like porn magazines nowadays. No, it is. No, I mean, Playboy shut down. Did they? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, they're gone because you know, it was so these are the lengths at 13, 14 years old, you'd have to go to get porn, and now it's just you open your phone in the bathroom. Oh, yeah, I mean, I yeah. have stories too. I'd have to go into garages and like you know, open up, like, yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna say, but yes. <laughs> but yes, we'd have to go digging to find it, you know. Uh -huh. So, I mean, you're not gonna stop boys from doing it, but I'm saying the stuff that's on there just, just freely it, open like that, yeah, it, it can so really different. damage the brain, it really can, and I it mean, does. There's been numerous studies that proved how, how bad it is for you, yeah, yeah, and it's because they keep pushing the envelope. I mean, yeah, so uh, we have a few things now. This is from a channel called Bruce Sees All, uh, Canadian, he's been looking at the moon for almost a decade now. I've heard he's, of this guy, he's pretty, yeah, he's pretty shadow banned on the moon. I mean, on YouTube. Um, I get the, but, he does not like the moon. <laughs> but he, he has, he's, he's showing evidence of like, you know, civilization on there. Um, yeah. No, no, I know. It's just, it's, it's yeah. funny. <laughs> so let's take a listen. Here. Not even putting ads on this. <laughs> I want to share this. You're looking at a city. This is the clearest view the, the entire world has ever seen of the surface of the moon. Over to the right, there's a giant, yeah. there's a tower, yeah. Over to the right, that crater, dead center over the uh, black circle there, in the center of that crater, there's a hole, there's a tower, a whole city of objects and walls constructed. I'm going to zoom up too. The bases on the left that have the same reflectivity as the surface, this is the most revealing image. Let's zoom up to see this. Look close up, the difference. Those objects are so well defined. The crater right behind uh, the arrow in the center, there is the tower at the end of the crater where it goes in the ground. Keep your eye where I am right there and look behind it, the giant wall. That's the oxygen blue line. There's a the crater with the hole. There's the wall and the city. And there's a towering objects. You're looking at different objects on the surface. I showed this at the stream. And I showed this a couple of years ago. It's not normal that the world's not reacting to this. We have the proof right in front of us. We don't need the Pentagon or the government to come up with a conclusion that, hey, these UFOs are the... This is not even part of the UFO story. It's not part of Corbell's story. It's not part of David Grush's story. It's not even part of Bob Lazar's story. This is my story. And wow. I have the proof. There are bases on the moon. I've showed over a hundred different types of bases on the moon, and they all have the same setup, pattern, and idea. Look, the tower right there where I'm pointing, that towering off the surface, another one at the back, walls and whatnot, and you can see the crater right in the center with the oxygen blue line. Crazy. He's got a cool channel though, and he has he does show a lot of UFOs that could be like a mile long, just like jetting past. Mm -hmm. um, Have you seen? <coughs> it's it was. Um, I think it was proven to be a hoax. Um, there's like it was like footage, quote unquote, footage from a secret moon landing. Like it was like Apollo 17 or 18, and they found a UFO oh, with yeah. the aliens in there. It was oh, really. Yeah, yeah. It was really well done. I mean, I know it's essentially it fiction, but it is, uh, yeah. I enjoy that kind of stuff. Me too. And I remember it was well done too. Like you said, like they had, they had the space patch on there. They showed the, they showed the craft in the crater, right? Ooh, and they went ooh, and ooh. got it. And there was like this old ancient goddess or something. Yeah, right? yep, that's that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really cool. Of course, I believed it when I first saw it. Yeah, I did I, too. Yeah, I am. I want to believe. See, Adam. I, again, the internet sucks because. <laughs> I, I thought of that and I like typed into my phone, you know, secret UFO landing Apollo mission or something like that. And oh, like, it's not there anymore. No, I can't. Uh, Never seen before footage of Apollo 15 and it's just them driving a cart like that. Obviously, is not what I'm looking for. Planning on the planting the flag on the moon. Not what I was looking for. It's anyway. you're ruining it, man. I mean, if, really it, if it was fake, why would they hide that? Right. You know I mean? it, now the internet is completely sanitized. They, it, you can only see what you are told you can see, unless you yeah, get so, the dark web. 
I mean, it's exactly. You know, I was thinking about that today. Um, the dark web, you know, it's not obviously it's not a good place to go, but they have a lot of this stuff there, like UFO stuff and leak material. Um, so I might because you need the onion browser, a VPN, and some other stuff to get. Yeah, I was to gonna it. say you and I just sit down so you can uh, show me how to do all that because I remember in college I was I remember onion and I tried figuring right. it out. Like I barely could figure out how to torrent stuff. I should have been better at computers. Um, I mean, you, you need a VPN. You need uh, encryption software, which is free now anyway. You know, and VPN and then, are cheap. VPNs are cheap. Uh, you just do, uh, what, is, what do you call it? Uh, Proton. It's free. Proton oh. VPN. See, but I don't, but I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Like, I don't know. Like, is it software? Like, I don't know how to work it. Yeah. I, I mean, if it's on your desktop, it's software. So it's is, it like, I mean, is it like opening up Google Chrome, but it's just called something else? No, you'd have to uh... see. This is this is why I want to. You don't have to explain. Okay, it yeah, now, all right. But this okay, is why yeah, I want yeah, you to show me. So I'm, okay, I don't like you. accidentally get send my info to the FBI or China or something. Right. Yeah, and you have to have and have the VPN set up where like every every like half hour it changes the the, the IP, IP address. Yeah, yeah. So here's the moon. It, no, no, okay. This is this is, and that looks like Earth. This came up. Yeah, yeah this is Earth. Yeah, but you'll sorry. see now since joke. we're talking about the moon. And so this is India's satellite mm -hmm. showing Earth. But then look, and it's just so apparently that's the moon. See how small it is? Is it on the back side of Earth? Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't know. like I mean, I'm thinking from there. this view, like it's basically if it went to the left a couple more miles or whatever, it'd be behind the Earth. And then it went away. And I yeah, think, because I think it went, reversed it. it just went behind the planet. Ah, uh, so you're saying, so you're saying, if it was here, it'll be bigger. Kind yes. Of thing? No, yes. see, look. No, it, it, I don't. It stays the same. I don't. Well, okay, I don't, that, I don't okay, understand because I, I, I want to show you this now. Okay. So NASA captures the moon crossing the face of the Earth for the second time. Look at this one. Yeah. Why is it so different? Because it's that's what I'm saying. This is up close, and the other one's far away. But then. I don't. Trying, I guess I'm maybe not simulating it right in my brain. I don't. That's probably I, a possibility. I'm trying to figure out what the, you're seeing. The like Earth it, looks so it's huge. Going, it's this going looks around, so small. Yeah. Because it's far. Because it's on the other side of the planet. But it's not matching this one. Well, I don't know. I still don't. I still don't see where your cursor is I, right now. Yeah. Where, where it was. Like put it. Yeah. Like, like if uh, it was if it was on the other side of the planet, it'd be hidden. But if you move it off to the right, it's on that side of the planet, so it looks a lot smaller. Okay. Plus, there's things like uh, you know different lenses and like you you know with with cameras they always say the camera adds ten pounds, and that probably is a lot more for the moon. Well, this looks more realistic to me than the NASA one. I I don't it's... that I think that NASA photo is very misleading. That yeah. one, I think that one's really misleading. Um, that does look extremely fake. It does. I'm assuming they did a lot of um, that photo editing stuff because obviously the dark side, it's not like the satellites, have, or maybe they do, I don't know, like a giant flash. I don't think a flash would be big enough to capture the moon like that. Yeah. <laughs> so they would have to brighten it somehow. You know what I mean? Right, right. Especially that the, that the earth is so bright. Or it's in between the satellite itself is in between the sun and the moon i honestly don't know right but the earth looks so massive here and the moon looks tiny again far away that's all i think this is but comparing it to this one no i know i understand that but then comparing it to this one but i guess yeah you're far away from the earth too that you're, you're much farther from the earth but then yeah, closer to the moon i don't know. i think this is just weird perspective all right, or okay. a ton of photoshop i don't know I don't know what they do over there at NASA. Never a straight answer. <laughs> All right, we are finishing up here. Scientists developed portable nuclear reactor with amazing feature, transformative for our economy, industry, and community. So yeah, but they, but they had that nuclear accident in Russia, so we can't use <laughs> nuclear power. Well, this is just a, a, a this is how small it is. No, I know. I just hate. I just hate that that's yeah. the excuse as to why we're so avoidant of using nu uh, nuclear power. You're right. I mean, they sit there and this. I mean, this is it's, it's technology we have now. It'll, it'll let us 
still keep our modern lifestyle without sacrificing anything. Plus, and there's no clean, and there's no carbon footprint. Cleaner and much more efficient than wind and solar. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And wind and solar is not going to work when there's no wind and no sun. But I this mean, will and, always work. Like, do you see how much space they have to take up for the wind exactly. like wind power to actually be worth it? So guess how many houses this thing will power up? Oh my god, a whole city probably. Uh, yeah, I mean, or a whole neighborhood. So it's five. It's five thousand homes. That tiny thing right, does five thousand homes. That's so cool. See, why aren't we? Yeah, man, for should, eight years we should go full on nuclear. Man, I don't yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, the the, the breakaway it's civilization horrible. did. You know, they haven't. They, they used it on their spaceships and for rockets for. You know, they just don't like humanity, man, because this will keep us flourishing and still living a modern lifestyle. But but solar and wind, you know, we have to eat bugs and you have to have brownouts and, and blackouts and, and sleep in pods. Right. Yeah, exactly. They just don't like humanity. And that's why they want solar and uh, and wind. But I'm glad. That, I mean, this is Canada. Canada's uh, investing in this. Yeah. Good. Good for them. Oh, yeah. Canada, socialist oh. paradise of North America. <laughs> Where's Trudeau been? The internet used to, used to make fun of him, make fun of him every single day. Trudeau-ben? Trudeau-ben, yeah. <laughs> uh, I just, I just want to say on behalf of someone who grew up an hour from the Canadian border, Canadians are no better than Americans, and I hate that they have this. Uh, yeah. Everyone thinks that they're super nice and polite. Of course, they're a nice. Canadians, you know what? There's also dickhead Canadians too. Oh yeah, have you been to Montreal? My God! Oh that's no, a... that's a different world altogether. They're holy good. crap! Something's wrong with those people. Sorry, yeah. if there's any. We actually we have like ten percent of our listeners are Canadians. <laughs> Anyone from Montreal? I actually, actually I lived in Montreal, so please, you know, give give me a break there. I lived there for a year and a half. Oh, a year, a year? Canadian yeah. listeners, don't listen to him. He's doing the American thing where they go, "Oh, I'm not racist. I have a black friend." <laughs> no, I'm, actually the best I'm, pot in the world is was in canada <laughs> of course. uh but that stuff got me so ripped oh man yeah it was with the days I, I you know i i don't i yeah anyway hi hi canada <laughs> hi canada yes hello quebec hello toronto i've been in toronto too i would love to go vancouver vancouver is like a dream of mine to go um, um yeah all the pictures i've seen makes it look really cool plus apparently like every film in the movies or every film in the world is filmed there oh yeah that's true x files x files was filmed there yeah it, it, apparently it's like such a um it's such an interesting city that like any other city in the world looks just like not just like it but you can it can pass for uh, it yeah what well, the food's supposed to be fantastic there if you're a foodie vancouver is supposed to be something else yeah it's um, it's super like international isn't it yeah, yeah, and Vancouver Island, you can see there's like, like it's the edge of the world, and there's like whales you can watch. It's just it's supposed to be just heaven on earth. That's cool. We should do China. A we should do a Canada trip anyway. Yeah, China. I wouldn't mind that. Like, it's we can just drive, you know, up the coast. That's good. It'll take a couple of days, but yeah, yeah. I mean, still be a good trip though. Yeah. China develops the world's most powerful hypersonic engine that could reach Mach 16. Good God. I thought humans couldn't go past Mach... Well, I guess this wouldn't be for humans. It, good point. Isn't Mach 9 like the most, the fastest a human has gone before? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, if they, if they, if these things were uh, electromagnetic, electromagnetically charged or something and they have like their own gravity, yeah, it wouldn't matter. But you're right. If it's a rocket, it has to be unmanned. It has to be. So um, Chinese hypersonic yeah. oh weapons. Oh dude, you can't get you can't stop that. If it has a nuke on it, forget it. I mean, referred to as revolutionary, the new air breathing engine should carry an aircraft to 18.6 miles altitude and travel around Mach 16. If true, at this velocity, intercontinental flights should take only hours and consume far less fuel when compared to conventional jet engines. Intercontinental flights. So wait a minute. I guess okay. if you're up at, I guess if you're up at eighteen point six miles, then there's no gravity. Maybe no, it's that's, that's not that's not how it works. Um, that's that it's physics. It's just like in space, you can simulate gravity just by moving your vehicle. Um, yeah, because you're. It's like imagine like you're in a fast car and you get pushed back in your seat because of how fast you're going. Imagine uh, that. Imagine that times like a hundred thousand. Um, the. Uh, Mach 10 speed is impossible for humans. G-forces would crush you. 
So I don't know what they're going to do with that Mach 16 there. Right? Maybe it's just like a, a test to see. You can just say, oh, this thing could go Mach 16. I mean, not practically, but it can. Right, right. So, yeah, I mean, they're they're going along. I mean, we must have something like that, too. Um, oh, yeah, one last thing. So here's, here's uh, Space Weatherman, <laughs> Space Weather News. Look at this beast, a titanic coronal hole oh, image, solar dynamics observatory 211 a view ionized iron uh uv emission in the corona so he goes here the large dark you see it right here mm -hmm. the large dark portion of the sun's atmosphere in uv light is caused by powerful magnetic fields pushing out the plasma in that area that would otherwise be uv luminescent the interplanetary magnetic field from corona holes stretch throughout the solar system and can directly connect to the planets this one is certainly powerful and creates uh and creates an enhanced risk for large seismic activity this weekend. Yeehaw. New year, more earthquakes, baby. Right. And then, of course, what's what's happening? We have this happening on our California coast. Have you seen this? No. <laughs> giant, we have giant waves and stuff. Oh, giant yes. and wind? <laughs> wow. It's hitting piers. Ooh. God, I would like, not be surfing yeah. out there. Not yeah. that I can surf. Twenty foot Ooh. waves. Ooh. Oh, that board was in the lip. Ooh. Well, boys, I fucking sent her a little too fucking hard, but <laughs> <laughs> look at that. It was the pier. Oh. Yeah, yeah that's cr that's crazy. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, this guy! Yeah, kaboom! Oh Poor guy. Look at this, look at this. Oh my God, dude! Oh my God, that's scary. That is scary. <laughs> I gotta get to a higher elevation. Oh man! So, I get, I would I would say the best thing we had this year was probably the the, the UFO congressional hearings on on Capitol Hill. Obviously, mm -hmm. we're not gonna play any of it. This <laughs> it's way too long. Oh, but yeah, you I mean, know we should have done a year in review for for this, but it's too late now. We're already two hours yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, and I mean this was the biggest one, right? And this show. I mean not the show, but it actually uh when this came out is when our show really took off on mm -hmm. uh on 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 podcasts on Spotify, on Apple, and that's where the public interest really peaked is when this congressional hearing uh happened and we were there covering it. And it's kind of tapered off, you know, but, you know, we still have this. It's uh, it's like when a market fixes itself, right? You have a spike and then it, it corrects yeah. itself. So Levels we out. have corrected now. Um, and, you know, we, we we love all of our listeners, everyone watching us on, on even YouTube. The Canadians. Even the Canadians. <laughs> uh, uh, I think the UK is it. The UK is the number two. We have. Wait, I can get you the actual. It's US, obviously, is 80%. Of our traffic, and then UK is number two, or is it Canada is number two? Well, hopefully, uh, over there in the UK, they've got a license to listen to our show. <laughs> Sorry, I, I we made fun of Canadians. I know uh, Americans are Americans are fat and stupid. There, it's all equaled out, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now no one can get mad at us, or everyone can well, get mad at us. Either one. If we go to our analytics, which is looking good, by the way, and we go to our episode, I mean, our audience. So we have 60% are US, 15% uh, are the United Kingdom, 8% uh, is Canada. So Ontario is number one. Hello, Ontario. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Alberta is 25%. British Columbia is 20%. Quebec at four. All right. All right. You know, they're not going to be mad at me. 4%. That's nothing. Also, I think it's from Quebec. <laughs> Quebec. Uh, you get really mad if you don't pronounce it right. All right, Canadians, this one's for you. Um, letter, the show Letter Kenny, one of my favorites, just ended. Really sad after eleven seasons. One of the best shows ever. But um, Shorzy's coming out, or I mean, it has been out. Two seasons are out. Um, also, one of my favorite shows of all time is a show called Nineteen Two, and it's about um, a police force in Quebec. In Quebec, huh? Yeah, and uh, really? it's, it's very dramatic. Um, it's 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 like a Canadian. Uh, like remember that show, The Wire? Yeah, yeah, I love that show, man. It's one of my favorites. I love it. So cool. It, 
uh 192's I, th- I would say a little bit more on the dramatic side not dramatic like drama drama like person yeah. person drama yeah um but it's it's really good i would i would check that out oh cool did you watch the movie gran turismo yes i don't remember much of it though oh i didn't know it was old i thought it was new <laughs> maybe <I'm, laughs> i just maybe, i just watched it maybe i'm thinking something else i could have sworn i watched that uh okay so it's the the game gran turismo but uh, right the racing so, game yeah so those guys it's a re- true story it's a completely true story they took guys that were experts at the game Gran Turismo, which is because it's a very accurate simulator. Oh, no, I didn't see that. I saw oh, the trailer okay. for it. Ah, <laughs> well, I know. It. I Now that you mentioned what the plot is about, I remember being like, yeah, okay. Right, right, right. Was it good? Yeah, it was really good. Really. I, I was shocked at how true it was. I'm like, no way this is real. And I looked it up. There's only one thing that they exaggerated or – Sorry, not exaggerated, but they had it in a different timeline. Other than that, it's all true, and it's crazy. It's insane. That's awesome. I'll have to check it out. Um, a movie you have to check out, because I know you'll like it, because it's all about, we talked about AI today, and we've talked about AI a lot last couple months. Yeah. The, show, the movie called The Creator. Uh, the Creator. It's on Hulu, and I will just say it's about AI, but you will really like it because it com- brings in a lot of themes that we even touched on today. Did you ever get into Westworld? Oh yeah, I've seen I've seen all of it. I've even seen okay. the I've even seen the original movie and Future World, which I... were, was the first season. It was, Michael, of... it was Michael Crichton, that genius. Yes, absolute genius. For those of you who don't know Michael Crichton, he also wrote Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park, yeah, and a ton of other books. And he was very oh, yeah. he was very smart and scientific in all of his books. He didn't just say like I remember this book he wrote called The Prey, which is I think my favorite of his. Um, it's about nanotechnology and he doesn't just say, and then there were nanobots. He literally in frightening detail oh, yeah. explains how the nanobots are created and it goes, yeah. most of it went way over my head, but the actual story is really cool. He's so smart. I remember when the first book I read of his was, was Jurassic Park and I was a teenager and that's when I really was, was my first, I guess, introduction to how corporations work and what they can do with the, oh, yeah. I was just fascinated by it, you know? What a what a great author. And a lot of his oh uh the abyss is his too, by the way. That yeah. movie was based on his book. Uh the the abyss is pretty good. Also, another there's two deep water movies that are my favorite. Uh one is called Sphere. I think it came out really close to the time when the Abyss was released. It okay. was like the Abyss and Sp- Sphere was also a book. I cannot remember the name of the author. Um, but it's about you actually would really like Sphere too, because it's about uh, these people, the, the U.S. government finds a UFO on the bottom of the ocean, and they put a team together to, to go see our, to go find this UFO. Oh, so it's very similar to the Abyss, they right? Always do that. Hollywood always does that, huh? They yeah. just all of a sudden they, if they have any inkling or hear like something's coming out, they do one that's similar to it. Yep. And then a movie that came out somewhat recently, I think 2020 or so, it's called Underwater. And it's got the girl from Twilight in it. And I know that's not a huge mm-hmm. sell for anyone listening to the show, but um, <laughs> she's, she's fine in it. But it's that's that's Lovecraftian horror. Um, and that's my favorite type of horror. So I love that movie. But yeah, um, you, cuz, check out uh, the, creator the creator on Hulu. I will. I definitely will. We'll yeah. do it. Well, it's... that will do it for 2023. Yeah. Oh, Man, what a year it has been in and out of rehab. Um, <laughs> That's it for me. Also work. <laughs> also work. I mean, I'm sure work has been up and down too. Uh, yeah, it has been for me too, up and down. I'm doing some some personal projects too, which I'm going to launch the uh, next year. Hopefully, it, it works out well. Um, but yeah, the whole UAP UFO stuff. I can't believe how mainstream it is, and how you know you're not a crazy person to talk about it or believe in it. Or I know, uh, man, it's just I... normal. So for the last few years, I've had a, a, a box and my tinfoil hat and a bunch of signs <laughs> and my homeless clothes that I wear so I can shout at people on the street about UFOs. And now <laughs> when I do it, they just go, yeah, man, I know. <laughs> and what? so it's like I lost I lost that 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 need to go out and scream about UFOs at people on the street. That would be fun to do anyway. I think just get on the soapbox and I, start preaching. Honestly, I, I straight up have really wanted to do that or just become a street preacher, even though I'm not a religious person. Dude, I'll be with you. Like, I won't be next to you, but I'll, I'll be around. So you <laughs> I'll be like across, you're alone. I'll be yeah. across the street pretending I don't know you exist. <laughs> but I'll be with you in spirit. But just in case anything happens, I'll run run to them to help you. <laughs> but I just want to shout. I just want to shout complete nonsense things that couldn't be taken oh, yeah. as like sacrilege. 
be like, and the Lord said, don't eat cheese pizza on Thursdays, you sinners. <laughs> you get like, a lot oh, of God. No, you get a gathering for that. If that's what you're maybe, <laughs> maybe that's what I'll do for Halloween, this upcoming Halloween. I'll, I'll dress. I got to find some like really ratty clothes, and I'm sure I've got my closet somewhere. I mean, I'll, yeah. I'll put on a tinfoil hat and carry a paper bag or a paper paper bag um, <laughs> of cardboard sign around um, that will say something ridiculous. I mean, oh, if one on place there. we have free spe- freedom of speech is in the streets. No one can do anything. I'll, no, you know what I'll do? I'll put on the sign. I'll, the sign will say, God hates signs. <laughs> oh, it's like a, it's like deeper meanings there, too. No, no, no. It's supposed to be because, you know, a lot, remember, remember like Westboro Baptist Church when they were still a thing mm-hmm. and they put the God hates that derogatory word for um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. people. Yeah. Do yes. something along. But like making it was say, essentially making fun of that. God, of course, in my opinion, would never hate anyone who has a sexual no. preference. This is this is obviously a just universe, you know. Well, uh, I was I don't nature. Know. Nature doesn't lie, you know, and that's why we have science and technology. If, they, if it lied, we'd never be able to progress or have these technologies around us. Yeah, but it also lets people who are rich rape little kids pretty much every day. I so. know, I know. Yeah, that's consciousness. That's, I mean, yeah, I mean that's why that's why a lot of people don't believe in God is because like why is there so much suffering? Why is there so, that, or that, all these things? And you know, it's valid points. But you know, I think there's an argument there to be made about how that's a that's a human thing. Like mm-hmm. that's human corruption. Like the whole mm-hmm. point about you know nature doesn't lie. Like if you stuck Elon Musk uh, and Joe Biden and your average Joe's on an island someplace with no resources. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, nature's not going to lie. It's not going to pick one person over the other. True. Well, yeah. shit. I think I just just dis- can. I was. I said that, and I immediately disagreed with it because you know people get cancer for no reason all the time, huh. or random diseases for no reason. I mean, a lot of those. I'm not going to say many of them are genetic, but <clears throat> a lot of those are lifestyle, aren't they? Oh like, yeah, no, of course. But yeah. you know, there, there are there are a lot of diseases and and sicknesses where it doesn't have to do with lifestyle it's literally yeah. like thinking about the kids who are born deformed or something yeah. mm-hmm. and it had nothing to do with it was just genetics just unfortunate bad draw of genetic code yeah i mean lots of religions say well they go straight to heaven so they're lucky kind of thing but that could yeah. be a cop it could be a cope i mean <clears throat> um since we love talking about other podcasts on the show did you watch the y files episode yet the new one this week? i think wait, wait remind me what it was i think i did but was um, oh was, i was you know i put it in with sleep and i woke up and it was the song <laughs> it was about it was about uh essentially uh the after afterlife like, afterlife you know, near-death experience that's what it was. <clears throat> yeah near-death experiences but it, he was it was really good i actually did he, did he just randomly it? I caught it live so i for the first time i got Ooh. to watch it live i didn't comment or anything because god it's just yeah thousands of comments going by every second it's There's insane no it's insane it. how many comments he gets yeah right but it was a, another aj knocked it out of the park as usual as usual he's such a great researcher great um writer i mean even the commercials it's so creative how he comes up with the hecklefish and yeah. the ads i mean it's so <laughs> funny yo <Yeah>. man <laughs> <laughs> love his show. Yeah, I just I'm love sure. that there's like there's like some like lore behind Hecklefish now. Is there anyone who doesn't watch that show? I feel like like I, I feel like you know why we well why would you recommend that show if everyone watches it? Don't, I don't know. Everyone watch it. I hope so. They should if they don't. <laughs> he's a, a, he's a great give reason. him a day. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. <clears throat> happy Happy New Year, cuz. You have anything crazy or just uh, just chilling? No, I'm I'm keeping my head down. I'm like so close to getting through the holidays uh, without craving a drink, and I'm gonna keep it that way. Good so I'm for you, man. Isolate for myself you. and and make sure I don't do anything stupid. It's overrated anyway. And plus, we're on the West Coast here; nothing happens, you know. By the time it, everyone, what I notice in California, everyone just goes with New York, and then the party ends. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so true. They got to see the <laughs> ball drop for some stupid reason. Yeah, it's just on in the background. Have you heard yeah. the horror stories? Really quick, have you heard the horror stories of, pe- of people who have like been there in person to watch the ball drop? Uh, I think I've been there. I uh, but uh, like people, I've heard people like um, wear diapers so they can because there's nowhere to use the bathroom. So you and you, oh there's no God. room. Sorry, can you hear that? Was that a helicopter or a plane? A yeah. little bit, a little bit. I hear it. Yeah, um, just a little bit though. It's gone. Let me let it go. Yeah, apparently there's like nowhere you can barely even move, even if though it's Times Square. And so people are just pissing themselves and stuff like that, just because there's no there's nowhere to go. You're stuck there. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so I've never been actually, and yeah, but I've been in New York for New Year's, but not right there in Times Square because yeah, it's too hectic and yeah, yeah, you have I, to be there like at four. Like, you have to be there like at four in the morning or something. Yeah, um, and I, I don't, do, I don't do crowds. I mean, that that seems literally like my worst nightmare is being in New, New Times Square on New Year's Eve. I don't think I could do that for a million dollars. I used to love it. I used to love crowds. Yeah, but now I just I can't stand them anymore. If I was drinking, I could probably do it, but not anymore. Ugh. Especially if everyone around you is drinking and you're not, it would look so stupid and retarded. Yeah, it would not yeah. be an enjoyable time. Right, I'm sure. And not. I don't have any pretty girl to kiss this New Year's <laughs> Eve, and and no dogs, uh, no dogs to kiss either. No dogs to kiss. Where are all no, the dogs? The, p- the pugs are gone. Uh, my parents stopped in town with their dog, and they're now back home. Um, my 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 favorite little boy Jasper, he lives in Maine now with his mom. Oh, oh man! You need to get yourself a puppy. Well, I'm thinking of. Well, see, I I would love to get a puppy, but I don't want to be at work for five days a week oh, leaving a poor right. puppy alone all alone. That's why I want a cat because cats are independent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You'll come home and it'd be just it would just sleep the whole time you're not home, and then once you're home, I'd say, oh yeah. And plus, anyway, they're nocturnal. Yeah, I mean, it's my cat's like that. I mean, she basically 10 p.m., 11 p.m. is when she's hyper. I'm like, man, I'm gonna go yeah. to sleep. I remember <laughs> our cats would have like wrestling fights in the middle of the night in the hallway yeah. outside my bedroom and uh-huh, uh-huh. Dude, around. you're just like good god you guys can they do this right when everyone was awake <laughs> no no they love nighttime they love it i know totally, i miss they're so different i miss our cats they were so cool so weird dude get a cat yeah i want one like my old cat who had thumbs she was the best <laughs> uh yeah man but aren't those usually like um they're usually like mixed with big cats, right? Yeah, they she was she was half Himalayan. Um, that was from Vini, the the cat mm-hmm. you gave me, or not mm-hmm. me, gave our family. Yeah, and she made it with the alley cat. Oh, he must have been like bought half, like you know, some bobcat in him or something. Oh, he was he was huge. And he was gnarly. Okay. He was beat up. I can't remember. <laughs> it was I don't think it was anyone's cat either. That cat just lived in the neighborhood. Oh, so for sure he had something in him. Yeah. Okay. When you have those thumbs, yeah, it's only the big cats that have them. Oh, cool. my my cat with no. thumbs. She couldn't walk on carpet. She was so sweet, though. <laughs> I love cats. Sweet. Well, this has been a hell of a, a final episode of the year, because I've, I've been so happy to be able to do this with you and get all the UFO too, stuff man. and obnoxious things that have pissed me off off my chest. <laughs> it helps. It definitely helps me too. Yeah, it's, it's 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 really. I think it's uh, it's therapeutic to talk about these things. I mean, I don't have anyone to talk about it really, um, especially when we when you get deep into it. Not just oh yeah, they're real. What are those things up in the air? Oh, the government. No, no. Like you know, what I mean, like get off. Oh my yeah. No, I, I can't tell you how many times. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I'm like halfway into uh, all the in- information I know about um, the what are the, the the tall the Nords the Nordish yeah. aliens or like. Yeah. You know, the difference between a, a small gray and a tall white and who's which of the weird UFO people of the 60s, do, you know, documented them and all this stuff. And you uh-huh. can just see eyes glaze over. They just go. I they're just like, I just want to meet the little green guys from Mars. And that's like <laughs> that's the depth of their knowledge and care about UFOs. Cartoon characters. Yeah. That's why it's so ridiculous that the government's so anti like opening up knowledge about them, because that's the vast majority of people just go. Oh, cool! Like gray aliens from Mars, neat. <laughs> I think be... Louis Farrakhan is pretty right there. It's probably just they they want to s- s- keep slowly do it. Yeah, and 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 show people that they're that they're in control, that they're the ones who are in charge, and there's no one else on top of them, and yeah, you know that stuff. They wouldn't they wouldn't want us showing up and then asking the aliens about you know who who are their religious figures, um, mm-hmm. what have they been doing to us for the last 50, 60 years? How does how do your engines work? Um, tell me about your philosophy. How do you know what's your, your how does your math work? Yeah, yeah, and, and, then, uh, well, and then show us the manly and boobs. Well, why don't you get let's, let's do some predictions for 2024? So, what do you oh, think is going to happen in the UFO UAP field? And we can come, ne- we, we can do this again next year and we'll see how right we were. So, what, okay. do, you, what do you what, what's your big prediction for 2024? My big prediction is I think there's going to be another big uh whistleblower like Grush, and it's going to be a lot of the same. Where I think I think honestly it's going to be a lot kind of like a repeat of 2023. There will be at least one other whistleblower that shows up and testifies to Congress, and it'll seem like a big deal. And they'll keep talking about how things need to get released and yada yada yada. It won't 
but we'll get some more juicy tidbits. We might even see a picture, a real release picture of an alien corpse um, mm. or something like that. But then something weird will happen where it's like kind of like the the NASA videos of the moon where they go, oh, we this is a copy of the photo. We deleted the original or we, we lost the alien body after this photo was taken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. So I, well, think, I hope not. I think 2024 will be a lot of very similar to 2023. There's going to be, I think, one big, another big push, probably probably around summer, um, yeah. of another person coming forward and talking about UFOs and aliens in a big way. They might, they might even have actual proof and not just testify like Rush did. Like they'll testify, but My they'll first have, hand. yeah, yeah first they'll have first hand knowledge and will show pictures or videos that they have. Um, and and I think people will clamor like they have, and I think there'll be another push to try and pass laws, and it'll be more of the same. Yeah, well, I think yeah, I'm going to predict that we are finally going to find out about Roswell, and I and because of the whole NDAA that's been signed, it's been 25 years. That was the first one that happened that actually you know pushed our government to pass the National Security Act and all that stuff. I am predicting that since it's way overdue and since everyone already knows about it, it's been in it's been in movies that we will get disclosure about Roswell. So that'll be that's my prediction. I sure hope so, man. That'd be great. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? And you know, tourism in uh, New Mexico will just skyrocket. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Hmm, maybe I should invest in the industry. In Start looking, man. Start looking for <laughs> yeah, for yeah. That's it's kind of trading there. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Well, yeah, it's been a great year because thank you. It's been it's been hell of a ride this year with you uh, on the show and growing the show has been great to see. You know, we got we got lots of interest, traffic, followers, subscribers. It's uh, really awesome to see. It's it's been great, man. And honestly, I know it's been longer than a year at this point, it's, and it's you know fifty two episodes, but it, uh, it's flown by. It's gone a lot faster than the last podcast we did, which shall remain unnamed. Yeah, um, that definitely. I I don't think that lasts much. No, how long did that last? A year and a half. A little, yeah, a year and a half. I'll say a year and a half. Yeah. And that seemed like a lot longer period of time than this has been. Oh, and that was a lot of work. <laughs> was, oh my god! Yeah, that was a lot of work. It was, you know, and, but it definitely. Uh, we had a lot of fun with that one as well. I don't want to say it was oh, like yeah. terrible, and it was. I thought it was a really cool format, mm -hmm. um, and we got to meet a lot of really cool people. We did, and we it was a much a lot of thing. really stupid things with those cool people. Oh my god, yeah, that's not even me. One day we'll we'll tell these stories, but there were there were some crazy stories with that podcast. <laughs> yeah, when the statute of limitations <laughs> runs out, we can finally reveal what we did. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, happy new year, happy new year to you, happy new year to our uh, to our subscribers and our listeners and our people that watch the show. Um, Again, follow us on Twitter at UAP the podcast, and you can find us on all the platforms, podcasting platforms, on YouTube at Uncovering Anomalies Podcast, and Rumble at UAP Podcast. Once we get that working up again and running, uh, so and support us, please, for the new year. Let us get yeah, we, that. We've we've talked about joining Mufon, um, not just not just subscribing to Project. What is it again? It's not Aurora. Aquarius. I said. Aquarius, yeah. but we, we're talking about legitimately becoming uh, UFO and, and investigators. Yeah, um, yeah. on the phone, oh, yeah. the front lines. I mean, I'm sure once if we're in, if we're like the if we have that package, researcher prep package, we probably can because then we'd we'd have all that knowledge of all the previous cases. So we'll have all you know. What I mean, we'll have all that mm -hmm. in our heads. So we probably could. Yeah. yeah, and on on in that vein, you know, if you have your experiences with UFOs, abductions. Uh, ghost stories, Sasquatch, um, anything, um, mm -hmm. you know, let, let us know. H hit me up on um, on X, uh, Topher at all. Um, I'm not on there. Well, I am on there. I don't really, yeah, you I don't post anything much, but I will. But if, if someone tags you, you'll see it. Yes, of course. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'll interact with them too. Um, even if you're an AI bot, hit me up. <laughs> It'd be nice to have someone to talk to. Sounds good. All right. Yeah. Thank you all so much for listening to the Uncovering Anomalies podcast. This has been episode 52. That is I Want to Believe Adam and Woo! I am Topher 2024 XXL I podcast New Year <laughs> edition for only $29.99 a month. Um, so I guess, yeah, we'll see you all next year. Next year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs>